Hello and welcome to Paddling Pool 262. Lots of teams have registered. We now have a group stage and we're going to start with Picky X Playboys versus Exploding Face. Hi, I'm Pat here with Kerita here to cast your tournament. Kerita, how are you doing tonight? I am doing very well, thank you. I hope you're doing well as well. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it will be Paddling Pool again this week again and next week too, just like the previous <laughs> week. Uh, two teams ready on the line for a Splat Zone to introduce uh, the, the, this tournament and this group stage. Yeah, we start with those Robo Roman. This is a map that's already been pretty... Pretty beloved by uh, everybody, it works so well, there are lots of different options you can have, lots of different ways you can play them too, and honestly, as a first look on these two teams, that's a pretty good start. Yeah, that's a, a pretty good start, uh, a map mode that uh, lots of people now enjoy, and I must, uh, I must say, who doesn't mm -hmm. like a good bowl of noodles? <laughs> yeah, no, ramens are the best. But yeah, after that, we'll go to Barnacle and Dime for some Rainmaker. And if need be, if need be, we'll go to the good old classic Inkblot Tower Control. Yeah, if needed, and it might be needed because uh, <laughs> this is uh, something very usual at the beginning of the, the tournament. We have two mm -hmm. teams uh, seated very close to each other uh, on the, the very first match in the group stage or even in the first round of the, the bracket. Uh, so this may be one of the closest match we will see tonight. Well, we're about to find out. Uh, here we go on the left opening. We, we see a pencil gal. Slusher and Shard on the other side, though, that's that's a Zekofin uh, Charger with a Range Blaster. There's a bit of uh, more play on the side of the Peaky Playboys. Yeah, Peaky X Playboys. I expected a Pencil because Silly can play Pencil, uh, but they chose sort of a more aggressive comp, uh, in not that much turf based. Even though they are they are picking the zone first, and they will try to take some kills. But Silly gets splatted, so the Slosher can mm -hmm. get in on the zone. Mm -hmm. One kills, two kills, and maybe three now. Yeah, that last one's a trade, but uh, Exploding Face is going to take the zone, is going to go forward the strikes to get some continuation off of that. Irex <laughs> getting another trade off of that all right now. Exploding Face has a very good hold onto the zone, and now that they're in position, it's all on the picky. Okay, they, they get a cap, but that's not enough. I was expecting uh, some recap because of the tripling strike mm. from the charger, mm. but oh damn, this is this is getting very impressive mm -hmm. right now. They they are not losing any time on uh, Playboy's expickiest side. They will mm -hmm. take the lead very soon, I believe. Yeah, lead is taken by the Peaky Playboys. And right now exploding face looking to find a way in. They have like this. They have used their special one. Now Picky Playboys are counter pushing. Picky Playboys are going to hold that zone a bit longer. The strikes are coming, trying to neutralize and able to capture. That's big, big for Exploding Face. But the Picky Playboys, they don't mind. They are cleaning up, getting splat after splat. And right now they get the zone back for themselves oh. and they keep that control character. Mickey is so impressive with its range blaster. This is. Mm -hmm. Crazy! I would be. I would love to be able to take those picks. He gets splatted. Unfortunately, another splat is taken by exploding face, and the zone is captured. Uh, the lead is a bit far, but they must remain aggressive. Yeah, exploding face able to take that control back, but Tiki Playboys are already on the map, looking to go forward. There's a trade here. That's not going to do much, but the strikes are going to be able to flip the zone right there. And now Picky Playboy is looking to just cement themselves near the zone and push Exploding Face away. It looks like Playboys are, are doing pretty good for themselves right now. And Mickey is just on fire. Yeah, Mickey is just uh, absolutely 
un unmanageable. He, no one can handle him on the side of exploding face. Uh, the penalty is uh, far over for uh, Piki X Playboys. They are close to, t to taking this KO and two players are down again. Three now. I believe it will be over unless this is a clutch from the 52 gal. Well, it looks like the clutch is not going to happen. Peaky X Playboys takes that game number one. Exploding Face, they, they managed to get a few good pushes, but the second Peaky Playboys really figured them out, the second they were in position, like the game was done, Exploding Face was not able to push on them. Yeah, honestly. Uh, plus, even though they had a few good opportunities, at least mm -hmm. twice during this game, we saw the triple ink strike uh, from the charger taking the zone by itself. When when triple ink strike uh, is launched, mm -hmm. the the opponents must paint uh, inside and below uh, the triple ink strike, but they didn't. So it was each every time it was an easy cap for uh, Piki X Playboys. Yeah. Yeah. Piki Playboys, like they they really. To, to that control and uh, exploding face a bit too slow to react a bit too uh, like not able to really mount a push together play off of each other special where where picky x playboys were able to paint over the strikes were able to get back in keep their positions together and, uh, and maintain their presence right there but yeah it's clearly not over these two teams are able to i mean Exploding Face was able to bring the fight to the PKX Playboys and uh, in a different map mode with different setting anything can happen and uh, in Rainmaker the dynamic of the game is uh, is pretty different. Yes indeed, uh, Rainmaker is really a very different mode plus Barnacle and Dime is not something that you see that often in Rainmaker. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's difficult to really build a, a solid push when you you struggle at uh, taking the positions on the the top left. Yeah, it's honestly yeah, I don't see that it better than in uh, in competitive uh, for Rainmaker, but there, there's always the way this map flows of having that wide open space in the middle. We're going to see the chargers come back and uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see like the battle between these chargers being incredibly key because the second you're able to take down the other charger, your team can move forward incredibly easily, incredibly fast and with the Raymaker score a lot on a lot of points. Yes, uh, you, you probably know the chargers playstyle way better than me but i was about to say that uh, i was also expecting uh, a battle between the the chargers uh, yeah. snipers can be so good on this map because it's so flat uh, again Ooh. it will be a pencil against a charger but not the same one than before and this time there are no 52 gal but two mm -hmm. splatter shots uh, for exploding face yeah that's uh i mean not that much of a change in comp on the side of Exploding Face, but Picky Playboy is bringing honestly that vacuum to the table. It can really create the surprise in Rainmaker. It's a risky pick, but honestly it can work. And uh, right away Exploding Face grabbing the Rainmaker and pummeling everything, trying to get an opening, trying to get to that checkpoint. And they get it! Whoa. Yeah, they get it. Uh, even though this is probably the end of this push, uh, this is already... Well, actually, this may be not over. <laughs> <laughs> they get the rip up at least, but uh, right now PKX Playboy's getting two down, and with the Wave Breaker here, they should be able to bring the Rainmaker back into me. Now it's all about pushing a bit more further. Palio is is almost getting it but it's just Palo with it's a the shot left standing and that's going to be a checkpoint for PPX Playboys and now they're, they're all surrounding the Rainmaker they're ready to go forward even more they're gonna get more and here comes the vacuum they can just push forward this was a delayed wipeout and then with the ink vac it was Ooh. a guaranteed push Ooh. and another wipeout this will be oh they're respawning they're, they're contesting the pop but Oh, two players Ooh. down on each side. Oh, that pick right here is so 
big PKX Playboys are staying in there. They're running for the goal and just one point away. Exploding Face are keeping themselves alive in that game. It's just Mickey with the blaster. He's charging. They don't, they don't, they, oh, oh, they don't oh, No, no, you... What? <laughs> <laughs> This is a robbery, ladies and gentlemen, a robbery. That's, well, nice, nice way to win it. Congrats. Congratulations to PKX Playboys. You, you guys win this one. Uh, it's always frustrating, but on the on this push, like, honestly, PK Playboys were really dominating uh, the the last minute we saw. So I guess it would have, even though the KO is a, is a thief, uh, it would have been very difficult uh, for um, for Exploding Face to come back and put the KO on their opponents because it was the only yeah. way to win that. Uh, they were struggling inside of their spawn. They had to suffer two wipeouts uh, in a row. Yeah, that, that was like a harsh push by PKX Playboys. It, it was just sealing the deal and avoiding us three minutes of, of, of just pain for the exploding phase. But there was always a chance PKX Playboys sealing the deal, winning this set in pretty dominant fashion, honestly. Yeah, pretty, pretty dominant fashion, pretty impressive. A good mm. way to start their group stage yeah. uh, and we will be seeing two other matches uh, of group stage right after this one and a short break.
Welcome back. It's already the second turn of the group stage. This match will be again on Robot Roman for starters between Zero Magnum and Mull. I'm still Keuta and I'm still joined by Pat. Yes, and this time it's about some Clam Blitz action. We're going to start right away and I see a dynamo. I love it. On the other side, no backline, no midline. Okay, there's a there's a machine uh, at least. But yeah, that's going to be a very fast-paced game on the side of Zero Magnum. Yeah, uh, please give some prayers for this poor Dynamo who is already targeted by the, the sloshing machine. Sloshing machine who died uh, from two players, I believe. Mm -hmm. And Mul is already trying to push forward the opponent's plat with the, the range blaster mm -hmm. taking his plat. And here comes the tactical. The range blaster will not be able to take it. Utrizuka, no splats taken, but they are already trying to push forward. The crab tank is all alone right now. Yeah, and that's no longer a crab tank, but both teams had tactical uh, zero magnum should be able to come back in the game very fast, but not fast enough to deny an opening of a basket. Bill is going to be splatted right there. That's just going to be 20 points for Mull. But uh, yeah, Zero Magnum getting away with not that much pain, not that much points inflicted on them. But right now Mill is back on the attack. It's just the tri slasher and it's nobody wipe out counter. Uh, damn it! Uh, it's I have PTSD from that time where blasters was were everywhere. It's terrifying to see <laughs> how strong the range blaster can be today. Crab tank to tr trying to delay the push. All the opponents are. Uh, Oh, they're located, and this is at least one splat uh, to mm -hmm. allow Zero Magnum to go back in control of the mid. Unfortunately, they don't. They're still in their spawn. The Trizuka to to force them to oh, and to take splats actually. And Mill right now is pushing forward and forward, getting a bit more, reopening the basket. But they all again have players down. They, again, they have to move back. That's just ten more points. For Mill. They are not getting the big pushes that they could get given the, the control that they're able to get on the on the map. And right now Zero Magnum is in control of the map. It's their turn to go forward and try to get something. They have a tactical ready. They're just waiting for an opportunity. But Mill again looking to get a bit more of that. Okay, the Dynamo that's Roller good, taking Dynamo. two splats on the defense, something that mm -hmm. the Dynamo can be very good at. If you haven't seen hit play, placing, uh, their Zero Magnum is actually able to take their open splat this time, but unfortunately mm. they all get splatted while rushing. The Crab Tank is all alone again, and it will be probably... Sp no, Ooh. never mind. <laughs> Never mind that Crab Tank is getting away and is going to keep mid very much blue, allowing the rest of Zero Magnum to get back in the game. With two minutes left, Zero Magnum is still need a bit of oh, that time. <laughs> he was he was all alone. Okay guys, I am the dynamo, I will go on the front line, right? Well, he took two spots this way, taking a trade, but at least uh, his team is able to go forward again. Dynamo is a weapon of surprises, and right now, both teams have two players down that are no able to just get a bit more control, get mid. Right now, they have lots of clams, they have a super clam at the ready, they are looking for another push, they are just waiting for a special or two, I guess, before they can go forward. The Tacticular is deployed, that's step number one, and now it's all about getting in. Uh, it looks like uh, Zero Magnum is able to defend. It's the third power clam scored, but again, it looks like it will be just one power clam and nothing more. Meaning, the the way the path is still opened for Zero Magnum. Like mm. two power clams and one little clam is enough to take the lead. Uh, it's they don't need much. However, they they can't seem to find it. Uh, they save the power clam. They're trying to to rush forward, but. They're, they're just getting splat every time. They, they can't really hold the position in their open space. Mill looking to get them very fast and cuts right now. They have full control of the map. They, they need to wait for some more clams before they can push. And now Zero Magnum is back on the push. Defending their spawn, denying, denying. 
they need to go forward. They have just 30 seconds to get control, get glam, and get they get scoring right now, but no are uh, holding mid and uh, just holding zero back them away. Uh, they struggle at pushing and rushing their opponents. Every time there is a, a Trizuka or a Crab Tank, no player is following under to rush the opponents uh, and taking easier splats. This time they are trying to go on the plat. They have quite m quite many clams. They have yep. two poor clams. That's very good. But they must open the basket and the Trizuka holds the defense. One player down each, each team. Two players down. Three. That's it. Just a crap tank. Yeah, just the crap tank and the clams are dying and the wipeout to seal the deal. Mill, they, they didn't get that one big push, but they kept control of the game for five minutes. Yeah, it's a bit sad for Zero Magnum. They mm. they run a very aggressive uh, composition, but in the end, it was. Every time they, they were able to to take one opportunity, they died right after. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to, to find the balance between being aggressive and not taking too many risks. Yeah, as you said, it w it's really about finding that balance, finding that control. But in the end, it was really no, controlling the fight, controlling the pace, not getting afraid like zero magnum they had the fast comp they had the short range they needed to outpace their opponent more they, they didn't care they just kept their ground and the second one of them was trying to run forward there was a dynamo or a range blaster to just stop them in their track and having a range blaster of that caliber coming into a tower control game is going to be pretty tough on to zero magnum Yes, we will see tower control on Marlin Airport. I very rarely see this map mode play. Uh, I don't know it very much. I just, mm -hmm. for, for, if I remember, the the path is quite long, but very difficult to to defend. There is sort of a vibe of um, new Albaco Hotel uh, uh, tower control on this oh. map mode, I believe. I see what you say about that, and I kind of agree, honestly. There, there's, there's kind of that dynamic, though it's not as wide open a map as Albacore was. But yeah, there's really having this wide open mid and and these weird ways to get in. On Albacore it was the great bridges, here it's uh, the, the moving platforms, uh, anchovy style. And uh, yeah, there's a uh, like it, it, it's really technical and tough to defend. And again, especially since neither of his teams are bringing uh, long range weapons, I have no idea how this map is going to play. Yes, indeed, I have no idea either. No change, I believe, uh, on oh. Ooh, I, there is a change. On one side, there is no, no real change, but a pencil is brought by uh, yeah. by Zero Magnum this time. So they do have a long range weapon. They bring a pencil, they bring a range blaster of their own as well. Zero Magnum really changing their tune, changing the way they play. They don't have a single shooter right now, and they want to bring the fight. They have like the range and the range is paying off right now two down onto mule and zero magnum is getting on the tower uh the try to catch try defending the tower uh but mm -hmm. one play oh it's get weakened but they have uh, an opponent uh, the mm -hmm. the splat dulies i believe rushing on the right side to delay the defense uh, two players are Ooh. down on zero magnum it will no longer be a push actually it will be yep. a counter push initiated with the trizuka from mul yeah and right now no is on the attack and oh, oh, oh excuse me oh. excuse me <laughs> <laughs> okay that's a wipe out by the Range Blaster <laughs> and there's like nothing else to say. No, he's going to bl blitz through the checkpoints. They're already on to checkpoint number two. 
egg weaver crab is trying to defend but that's not enough they're under constant fire and no is going to the third and final checkpoint right there the the third and final checkpoint the trizuka oh clo close ranger trizuka is not the best but it mm -hmm. looks like yana will be able to push the tower again this is a del no not delayed wipeout momo is still Taking splats everywhere he is. Mm -hmm. Damn, I, I, I can bet he there will be some Twitter clips tonight. Yeah, Merbo on absolute fire, and that's what you want to see. But Zero Magnum, they know what they need to do. They are getting on the tower. They took a splat onto the Dynamo. That is huge. That is the tactical weapon, and right now, no, they're almost wiped out. This is the opportunity for Zero Magnum to get their head back in the game, to get forward and right now. Look at that, they are ready to fight. It's the Range Blaster fight and it's a, well, it's a tie in the end, but that's a good trade for Zero Magnum. They're all, I mean, they got the first checkpoint and they, they got some more. We're only halfway through the game. Yes, uh, they took the first checkpoint, so it will be faster to come back. Plus, the pencil didn't die, so it means a tacticaler already ready. Uh, a duel. The oh, oh no! The Trizuka taking one, not to say two splats, I believe, on the. Home. Oh, mm -hmm. Another one, and another one. They're oh. merciless! No, is. When, when Mel is pushing, they're really, really going forward and. Laying corpses left and right. Zero Magnum struggling to establish their defense. Eggs with a crab tank is going to at least stop things on the side of Mo. That's going to be two down on to Mo. And Zero Magnum is able to at least stop the tower. But the jumps are coming in. We have the tacticalers active. It's all on stopping that blaster. I was about to say it was a delayed wipeout, but it was just not delayed enough so that uh, the blaster couldn't come back. The blaster super jumped and is already just clutching the defense all mm -hmm. on its own. He took two splats and allowed his team to take another push already. Yeah, and right now, no, I'm back and the push back. Two. Checkpoint number three, trying to get it. Painter is going to be cleaned up on that platform. And right now, no, all they need to do is to stay there to keep that tower here for five more seconds. And they are going to get that checkpoint. They are just a few points away from ending this game and ending this set. And that's going to be game number two for Mull. Game number two and the victory for Mill. Congratulations to them. They were really dominant on the the two games we saw, especially Momo. Like this blaster, always always trying the risky stuff, but always winning the fights. It was terrible. It must have been very <laughs> painful to fight against him. Yeah, that was. Really a great move, and here we see it again, the quad by Momo. Great, great moves, and no, honestly, it wasn't just a single pop-off. It was constant during the game of going forward, getting the picks, getting more and more and more, and uh, really Zero Magnum, despite switching to a more backline comp, having a bit more stability, they were not able to really to really stay on the map and defend. Yeah, they were fighting against a one-man army and another army <laughs> uh, alongside a tough fight, but we also saw that they were able to initiate a few occasion, a few opportunity to push. They must try to rely and to, to, to focus on these good things they did. They were able to adapt a bit and we wish them good luck for the... the the end of the tournament yeah because this tournament is not over it's just round two of groups and we will be back with round number three
And welcome back. We are now in the third and final round of Battling for Groups. And uh, we will giving you a little treat, a little peek at what's, uh, at what's about to come. It's going to be Aise Shokai versus Medaru Kauta. And this will be a very disputed fight because this is uh, the fight for the first place in the group I, like seed 9 versus seed 10, the two mm. first uh, team of the group. Final match, a French team, Aise Shokai, against a German team, Meraru. And I always love when two established teams fight against each other. I'm happy to, to see what it will be. Plus, I'm very excited to see that very possible sword fight. <laughs> yeah, we love a good sword fight. I, I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We're going to start on uh, Hagglefish Tower Control. Pretty much a classic. Teams are almost ready to, to get in the game. And uh, yeah, that's a uh, wide open map. Very classic, very well. Very much a, a well-known quantity by uh, by every players of that caliber. But here we go. Medaru is uh, opening no back line. They have the sword, and the sword is coming for Ice Shokai as well. And Tika is bringing the opening gambit, 52 gals. So let's expect a very very quick fight by Tika right in the start. Yes, we can even see it with uh, just the, the paint uh, at the beginning. Straight mm -hmm. lines for Aise Shokan. Meanwhile, Medare is taking a bit of time to charge the special. Very different strategy. Uh, Aise Shokai trying to take splats and they, they do, they do. They rush their opponents. Uh, and oh, <laughs> sadly, uh, the, the special will not be activated this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, Medaru Ooh. has an opportunity to defend, but it's difficult. Aise Shokai is so, so aggressive. Yeah, Shokai really taking control right there, and they're going to bring that tower to the first checkpoint. Medaru needs to regroup. That's the tactical active for Shokai. Medaru, no specials, no real good way to get in. They're going to give the checkpoint to Shokai right there, and Shokai, they want more. They're in there, and Bob trying to get another splat, trying to harass under that ledge right now. We are checkpoint number two, and oh! Excuse me! I fear no man! <laughs> I fear no one! I will just go where you are. I, I'm not supposed to reach up there. <laughs> Sorry, I can. And this will be a pain for you. Two players are finally down on Aise Shokai's side. So the push may be finally over. This is going so fast. Another splat taken. Medaru must not rest if they want to take back the mid and have an opportunity to push from themselves. They have straight three specials ready already mm -hmm. the one used but it gets splatted i say shokai is not joking yeah shokai uh, especially they're not wasting a single second they are going in making sure that constantly medaru has to fight constantly medaru cannot breathe and right now shokai with a statement of power they are doing so much and here comes the zipcaster we've seen what that zipcaster can do making sure that nothing can be put in motion by Shokai. The tower is going to move forward back to that run, but it, it stopped, but there's two down on, Sh on Medaru again. Shokai are keeping the attack on. They are using their special to defend. At first, it was the Trizuka. There is also a tripling strike ready, uh, but they want the players to come back before using it. Meanwhile, oh, it may be, ooh, it, it may be. Ooh. Oh, finally, finally, three players down. And but at finally, what cost? Yeah, Meru, they can breathe. They can go forward. Tacticula is active. It's their turn to get a push. If they don't get a push here, <laughs> if they give the momentum back to Shokai, they're in deep trouble, but right now they are going forward, getting the trades, and with the Tacticola, that's pretty good. Tacticola is active for Shokai too now. It's going to be pretty tough. The strikes are thrown. Medaru not able to get momentum. Shokai is back in the Antica, already looking to get a bit more splats. Tika has always been so impressive with the, his uh, 52 gal. They, re they are really 
dominating uh, in the fights. Uh, Midaru is not able to do anything. As long as they will not take more kills, it will <gasps> be... There will be no way for them to contest uh, this aggressivity. And right now, Shokai is bringing the tower forward again with just a minute and some left. They don't need more points, they just need that momentum. Meadow is struggling to set themselves up into lead. They get punished for every move they do. They have two players down again. <laughs> every time they have uh, a numerous advantage, every time they have two players down, they don't manage to get past the mid of the stage. Look at this, two players down again. The tower is miraculously pushing strong fire. It's further that it's just 80 points left, 20 points scored, and nothing more in more than four minutes. I say Shokai is dominating. 30 seconds left. Shokai is back in to me. The Medaru, they, they need to find a way to beat this team, but right now it's not working. Three players down, it's just Lucifer. Lucifer is going to save a Tacticular for a final, final push. Everybody has to respond and get in, and Ticker is bringing bad news again right now. It is so tough onto Medaru. <laughs> Oh, oh, this is a good splat. This is... Oh, it had to be a trade! Bomb is able to take the trade uh, after landing, uh, after the zip caster. This is so sad for Midaru and it's a wipeout. This is just over. I say Shokai is just so strong on this one. One, two, zero. Game number one goes to Shokai. That was... That was dominance by Shokai. These two teams are, are, one, are one apart in the sea, but right there Shokai showed that they are here to fight, that they are the undeceded team that's here to fight the higher teams. That's, that was dominant by Shokai, and I don't know what Medaru does after that. Does after that. I... I don't know, and they, they must find the answer, but it was really difficult. They were... Their strategy was alright, they had mm -hmm. good positioning. Unfortunately, what can you do when you just have a 52 gal rushing to you and taking two splats uh, in one second? You just just can't find fight that. Yeah, it was... It was so tough on them, it was... Medru being constantly in a fight, fighting for their lives while Shokai, they, they didn't mind, they were just going forward, fighting, fighting, and they wanted these fights to happen. Medru, they, they need to switch things up to adapt to that pace that Shokai is bringing, because if they're not able to, to switch gears and uh, get to faster and faster, they, they won't be able to follow what Shokai is doing. And uh, speaking of faster, we're going to Clam Blitz now. Sorry, I missed the point where where it's linked to faster. Clam blitz is fast. You need to collect the clams and run in. You you can't. You don't have to wait for the tower. Come on. Well, well, in in the best of the best of the worlds, yes. But uh, on pa it's it's just on paper. In practice, uh, clam blitz is more more often the mode where uh, the game can be the. S can be slower when you have to wait for the basket, when you have to wait for the teammates, mm. when you have to wait for the very first opportunity because it's difficult to reach the opponent's basket. Well, wait and look. I expect Shokai to bring more speed, to bring more action, and you will see that this is going to go pretty fast if Medaru is not able to defend a bit better. Switching to the heavy head, it is honestly a very good move by them. It's going to allow them to control a bit more of the fights, but right now we have one down on each side and both teams are going to look to, to win this game. 
Yes, they also switched uh, from the, the slosher to the, the T Tech. Uh, waiting for the jump uh, been for the wall. Trizuka used, no splat taken, but mm -hmm. still one player down on Minoru. Two players down now. Uh, Adil is carrying this power clam. The zip caster to try taking the splat, but gets killed in defense. Minoru is able to hold the line. Mm -hmm. And Medu holding well, unable to get back into the middle of the map right now. Shokai trading, but you don't want the trades right now. Medaru has mid, Medaru has the fights going for them. And this is Medaru able to answer to what Shokai was doing. And now they are right under the platform looking for a way in. <gasps> Wait, okay. Two players down. I see Shoka is able to defend very well, and the, as usual, they're not losing any time uh, to go to battle. Oh! <laughs> oh! That's... Three strike, always yeah. uh, a bloody good special when able to clutch even the worst situations possible. Yeah, and right now both teams are back to the fight, but Shokai has control of top mid with that pencil, outranging everything, dodging the strikes, applying that pressure right now. Medu able to get back in mid, pushing Shokai away, and it's all about being able to can the other team. Right now, Medu has cleaned up their side of the map, and they they just need a few more clams, and they should be able to go forward. But Shokai is. Already back there, and the Zuka is fired across the map, getting two splats. Yeah, two splats. Uh, and oh, I, oh. I was saying it's slow. It's almost half of the time uh, spent, and no clam has been scored yet. Uh, it yeah, may be an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> this may happen very soon because yeah. I see Shokan managed to get uh, three players down and they are not leaving their open splat. They have lots of clam and the zip caster used. Finally! Yes! The basket is open right now and with two down onto Medaru. A lot of clams are going to be scored very fast. Right there, I say Shokai bringing the score down to 50, but with two down, Medaru are going to be able to get back that control. We had to wait for a push, but that push was powerful. Yes, very powerful. Uh, two, two, two power clams will not be enough for Medaru. They must uh, try to do the very same thing, meaning uh, taking lots of splats and lots of little clams. Uh, the tree strike very where um, I was about to say the positioning of Medaru was impressive, but uh, TK's one is even more impressive. Yeah, and here it comes. That's. Uh, <laughs> That's again Shokai under the basket, again Shokai reopening the basket, but they don't have that. Oh wait, they have enough to get the follow through. They just need a few more clams in the basket to keep it open. They extend their lead right now. Meadow is back oh onto God. the defense, but oh, still... So many clams! Oh. So many clams! Oh! And right now, just three more clams would be enough for Shokai to get the win, but they... Oh wait! They do have them! Oh. They do have them! They had them and there was a disconnect from Medaru Shokai able to just seal the deal, get game number two and, and just completely ending the dreams of Medaru right there. Uh, it, it was supposed to be a very close match uh, to see which one of these two teams would be able to take the lead in their group but mm. in the end it was really just... Uh, I see Shokai destroying their opponents. They they were brutal tonight. Yeah, keep an eye on Shokai. We will see them later. We'll see Midoru too. Both of these teams qualified for the top cut. But yeah, Shokai very much getting the better seed in that bracket and showing that they're here to fight tonight. This marks the end of the group stage. We will uh, wait a bit uh, for the beginning of the bracket. It will be single elimination after that. Uh, see you after the short break.
Splatoon Stronghold. A stronghold for competitive Splatoon, providing resources to long timers and newcomers alike. If you're new to the competitive scene or still figuring out how to join, we've a getting started guide and plenty of other resources to help you in your journey. If you are a seasoned veteran, we still have plenty to offer. You can find and join tournaments as well as participate in our captain forum and find free agents and teams. Our mission is to make competitive Splatoon easily accessible to everyone. So what are you waiting for? Join the Splatoon stronghold today!
Welcome back! We are here at last to start this bracket stage of paddling pool number 262. I am still Kyota and I am still with Pat. And this will be again Clamblitz on Robot Roman to start this first match between Paradox and Aishan Hunchen. <laughs> sorry! Well, not sorry. I'm going to call them H and uh, that's it. <laughs> Apparently, we have been told it means squirrel in German. Yeah. Well, squirrels are nice, but yeah, we are starting back again onto uh, Robo Roman for Clam Blitz. Last time we saw it, we never saw a good push on it. It was always just a single power clam getting in the basket and then everybody going away from it. So let's see if a team is able to get an actual push, is able to get good points on there uh, as this game is about to start right now ah. yes we will see if the squirrels are able to collect not the nuts but the clams on this map mode mm. or if paradox will be the one taking them uh ancient Shun, uh, has been able to upset two teams in their group stage can't Ooh. wait to see what they do in the bracket stage yeah, and here we open Paradox bringing a Splatana stamp. I mean, White Age is bringing a squeezer. There's no backline right there. Okay, both teams have a squeezer. We're going to see a bit of uh, Zookas on each side. And uh, with uh, both teams having Tactical Active, lots of players are going to go down. There's a wipeout onto Paradox H is opening strong. You said they were here for the upsets. I mean, they're showing why. Apparently they were not able to form the power clam fast enough and their their push is delayed, they are pushed back in their spawn. Manu trying to get the kill but gets splatted, two players down on the side Ooh. of Paradox and another opportunity, another wipeout for Aishanshan, able to this time form a power clam. Yeah, they got the power clam, they have a tactical active, they flew the specials and now they're opening the basket trying to get a bit more. Oh, they lost the power clam there. That's a lot of clams for nothing. And it's just going to be 20 points in this first push here on the clam. It's from a run. And I'm, I've seen this before, Kauta. Yes, uh, I have seen that too. Even though I I don't really understand why we we saw the, the super jump on the teammate. Maybe it was for this power clam, but in the end they just lost it. But at least they had the intention to do a stronger push. Uh, now it's the opportunity for Paradox to, uh, to take the advantage. They don't have a lot of clams, uh, however. Yeah, and right now both teams are back to the drawing board. Paradox 
I have the mid. They have control of mid, but the Ike are back in there trying to get the splats. And right now, both teams are just fighting for that middle ground. No, neither team is really able to get the advantage. And looks like Paradox is keeping that mid at least. Ike is still fighting, trying to get away in. They're not able to get there, though. Paradox are getting the upper hand, and now they have two super clans. At the ready, the big, big push could be incoming if they're able to go forward. The tactical is deployed, and that's already a bad pass. The clan in. Ooh. Oh, sadly, sadly, it will not score the second power clam. The push is already over again. Just one power clam. They had two, but only one has been scored. They didn't manage to take the kills with the Trizuka. They used two, but so little, so few splats were taken. Now, Trizuka is again in the middle of the plat. Uh, specials are ready. True strike are ready for Dario. And the tacticaler as well. It will be another push probably. Probably from Aishan Fun. Mm. And right now, both teams are so even with each other. Aish, oh, they have the whole map painted orange right now. They are just waiting for the opportunity, waiting for the way to push in. But with a few players down, they lose pretty much all of their clams and paradox. Are back into mid, back to the fight for the map and for the clams right now. There will be no push, we have to wait a little bit more. Ooh. And this is another trade, three players down on each side. Uh, it will just completely reset the neutral. Finn is trying to take the, the upper position, but in the end just lost to his opponent. Oh, another splat Ooh. from the slosher. Uh, Dario is very... Very impressive on this action. Uh, Try Zuka on defense. The game is still so close. One power clam and it could completely change the pace of the game. And right now both teams are fighting for every little bit of ink. Paradox holding their zone, making sure that nothing else can come in. I they've grabbed their pity clam. They are going in. They have two super clams at the ready. They're trying to get there and they're reopening that basket. And well, there's a price for that. But at least they managed to score 10 more points, but only 10 more, 10 more points. It's still micro pushes on this map. Both teams are really struggling to get the points, but right now, two down on to Paradox. I, they, they have that control and right now they keep that map orange. Yes, but they don't have a lot of clams, however. Uh, only seven, no, nine. They may just uh, pass clams to form a power clam. However, the, the, this is a duel of Trizuka. Two players down on Paradox, two players below. Uh, the push may take a longer time to be built. However, I believe a Shonshan will be able to form a power clam and to score! Finishing this game, 1-0. That's a way to deny overtime. <laughs> we, we still have yet to see a push made of two clams on this map, Kauta. <laughs> well, they, they tried most of the time. They yeah. had uh, both teams had two power clams, but only were able to score one. Yeah. Yeah, the, these two teams were pretty even though. I, they, they had the upper hand, they had a few more pushes, but Paradox was there. They were able to get a push of their own. They were able to collect the clams and to fight for the maps. So we will see what they're able to do on map number two. And map number two is going to be the classic Hagelfish zones. It's It's been chosen by... Aish though, so this is going to be pretty tough for Paradox. This is a map that Aish wants to play on. And they, they need to adapt, they need to find the comeback, they need to find the way in. Yes, uh, I'm curious to see what uh, the teams will choose because uh, this is... Generally, when we play Splatoon on Hagelfish, mm -hmm. this is also the time when we see at least one sniper, but no team were running a, a backliner on the mm -hmm. on the previous game. So, will it be still the, the super aggressive uh, playstyle mm -hmm. we saw from both teams? Yeah, if, 
if no backline comes into play, these squeezers are going to pretty much rain on the battlefield with their range, with their DPS and their walls. They're, they're the tools that allow each team to zone out and they're, they're going to be pretty decisive into holding the zone, into staying in control. But as you said, I mean, different map, it's zones. Having a backline here is is so, so useful. I, I, I can't imagine at least one team not bringing it. Yes, uh, it's likely that one team change uh, changes it. Uh, it's calm because, like on the previous game, it was almost mirror comps. Both teams were were running uh, a end zap, mm -hmm. a, a squeezer, and a splatter shot. The only difference was uh, Paradox was running a, a splatana stamper, and uh, mm -hmm. A was running a, a slosher. Yeah. Yeah, and both of these teams played pretty much the same of wanting to get the splats, wanting to splat their way forward and, and get more and more forward edge, able to, to get a bit more of an edge on that front. So maybe it's more on Paradox to, to move, but again, like if you change the map, if you change a, a very, very few things, eh, anything could change. And I feel like Paradox, like they, they're not, they were not so far behind in that game number one. So if they're able to acknowledge what's happening or what the other team is bringing, they should be able to uh, to get back in game two. Yes, they should be. I I believe the the teams are switching players, so maybe they're adapting their strategy to their opponents or to the map mode. Yeah, there's a. Uh... It's all about how you play the map and the mode this time. Like when when you are this close, the way these teams are, like your knowledge of the map, how comfortable you are on this specific map, can change a lot. Aish, they they have a bit of an edge there. They 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 won the first game. They they had a bit of dominance still. They they had a bit more of map control. And, and they chose that second map. So la right now, Paradox, they need to revert that momentum, but they're not so far behind. And I'm getting notified that we had a lobby crash in between the games, but right now both teams are all back in the lobby and choosing their weapons. Yes, back into the lobby and being getting ready. Uh, it's important for... Uh, it's important for a Shoshan not to lose the pace because they won the game. It was close, but if mm -hmm. they manage to rely on that little momentum, they may be able to take the, this game and winning 2-0. But Paradox could also uh, take advantage of the fact that it was quite close uh, to just uh, reverse the situation, taking a good advantage early game and maybe go for a quick KO after all it's plat zones yeah it's plat zones and here like if your team is able to take control of the zone take control of me go forward ahead of the zone and push the other team in their spawn you can you can very much go 100 to 0 very very fast and here we go Ash is bringing a pencil meanwhile Paradox, they're not really changing what they're doing. They are sticking to their guns. They're just Manu uh, uh, changing from the Splatana to the Slosher uh, mm. and the, if, if, if the Sniper Rider on uh, a Chang Chun. The zone has no master at the moment. Uh, Paradox may take it because they have two players down on the side of a Chang Chun. Uh, the zone is taken, it's pink right now, and Paradox is trying to uh, take the upper positions. Ooh, and right now there's a wipe out by Ash and Ash are going to take back the zone and now they're pushing forward now they're trying to set themselves up the Zuka is Ooh. going to come he's going to find the tri slusher and then the strikes are coming in right there very very nice answer by Paradox able to capture the zone as fast as they can and putting themselves in position now with Tacticula but now Ash Aha, uh -huh, they have a Zuka of their own, they get free down, they get a wipe out again. And the uh, Aish are back and now they're pushing very, very far in. 
They are pushing very far in. The penalty is over. They have a Trizook ready. Uh, they, they, oh, they have two, pl three players down now on the side of Paradox. A Chon Chon is uh, really. They really want to win what right now. Two, three players are on the the platform on the spawn of Paradox, and they still yeah. have two players down. Paradox really struggling to respawn right now. They finally have a tactical active that's going to allow them to get a bit more forward to try to get in at least. But the Zuka is coming on to them and 20 ticks left. Three players I down. Delayed Ooh. wipeout. I believe this will be over. They did not manage to take the, the critical splat on their opponents. Only, only the Trizuka left. And this will be the quite quick KO from Aishaukshan. Really going upsetting mm. every team they're meeting almost. A, a solid run and they are moving into the next round of the bracket. Yeah, Aish is going to advance and the tournament is going to go on. Right now we're in single elimination, so it's the end of the road for Paradox. And uh, I believe, Karata, that it's also the end for you. Goodbye! Yes, this is the end for me. I was very happy to uh, commentate the the paddling pool with you, and you mm -hmm. won't, you will go nowhere because this is going to be a long night for you, my man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got uh, more work to do. I'm doing block two with a wonderful hat. But before that, Kaota, where can people find you? Uh, people can find me on uh, Twitter at Splatkota if you speak French or also on eSport Bros TV I'm commentating some French competition I will even be doing so in half an hour but please don't leave, please don't leave stay here for <laughs> the, the paddling pool you have lots of exciting match to see <laughs> I saw the bracket, I saw the teams competing tonight, it will be very exciting I wish you, the chat and Pat and Hat and everyone a very good night uh, for the paddling pool See you right after this short break.
and welcome back to Paddling Pool 262. I am Pat again, this time with Hat, and we are bringing to you more top cut action. This time it's going to be Voté pour Concéder, a French team uh, made of uh, people from Please Forfeit and other French top players against. Um, I've seen this before, Skips. I am. Hey, Hat, Hat, you haven't even talked before, and we're already starting the game. We're already starting. It's going way too fast. I am not gonna pronounce that French name, by the way. That that's yeah. that's for you. Uh, how, how, what's the first word? It's Votes? Votes? Vote, Vote. Vote. I'm gonna call him Vote. Uh, Votes because I'm gonna forget it anyway. And, uh, yeah, let's, anyway, let's, <laughs> let's get Skips. this game on the road. Skip. It's Vote against Skips. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call it at that, at beautiful little Mega yep. March split zone. I always love, I'm oh, sorry, Tower Control. I always love, I mean, I was not seeing Mega March in general. Skips, the first one to get that cooler in, but the ends up goes down. No cooler uses for them. They only get a respawn, which is. All right, but no special save. Yep. Fote making some quick work on the tower and on that team. Skips yep. loses three players and with that, Fote is going to open that first checkpoint. Try strike on the defense, but I don't think it's going to stop Ooh. the capture. All it right, is. yeah. Fote just lost two players that didn't get that checkpoint and they don't have a tactical on their team. Right now, this is going to be momentum for Skips, but they're stopped right there because there's like already the answer by them. Vote is not wasting any time and getting splat after splat after splat, punishing everything Skips is doing and they are back to that first checkpoint. Yeah, try strike out Vote as well. It's gonna help him capture the checkpoint. Surely big, big try Zuko shot. Don't think it's going to matter all too much in that checkpoint, but delayed it a little bit could have helped, but a doubler on the tower to secure that checkpoint is a, checkpoint is a very good play mm -hmm. from Vote. Now they are still pushing the tower a little bit more forward, a few points at the time, already at 44, and preparing to attack the second checkpoint here, Pat. If you see the jet on the field, get a big, big special skips, and that second checkpoint is going to be in the offense very, very soon. Yeah, Loha's jetpack is always a sight to behold right now. Vote is in control of Skip's spawn. And Pelly is going to get splatted trying to throw a tacticula. And that's going to be game number one for Vote. Yeah, Vote really didn't skip a single player when trying to eliminate them. A lot of splats coming from Vote, as it looked like Skips with the Tekka Cooler might have a little bit of an advantage. Aloha with that Inkjet absolutely shredded it and then that just opened the floodgates for... Oh! Oh! Oh, that little fist bump at the end as well. Cheeky nice. little fist bump from Vote, but yeah! Very good opening on Vote and Skips definitely have to step on the gas a little bit and come back with a stronger comeback here on Raymaker, which my crap leg Scrap like no? Yeah, it's right. uh, Crab Leg Capital. Um, I knew it! I knew it! Yeah, yeah and uh, for, for Rainmaker. This, literally, mm -hmm. I've played on this map once. And only because every time I play Splatoon, like a couple times, like, once a week ish, it's just never, never on a rotation. It's... I also uh, mm -hmm. want to help hold a quick moment of silence uh, for Splatoon 1. <laughs> yeah. Who is uh, officially officially unsupported i am i don't know did, did you start with 2 one or not i i don't have a wii u never had i i started playing around the end of splatoon 2. wow it's quite late uh splatoon 1 i will genuinely miss it when i was 16 i had no obligations i could play all day long <laughs> i played this game for probably more than four and a half thousand hours which is extremely unhealthy, but it was the best time of my life. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm really gonna miss it. I am for real. I am going to miss Platoon One. Hey, you I, know, uh, it's, it still exists. It still exists. Ways. Yeah, I mean, I'd never Wii U, so I couldn't really live, enjoy the final moments I saw my Wii U <laughs> off oh. long ago. Uh, maybe regret a little bit, but you know, life goes. Uh, and let's be real, we're gonna have a uh, fan multiplayer anyway for Splatoon, so I'm not gonna be oh, too yeah. worried about that all so much. Anyway, Rainmaker, Crab, Leg, Tower, I forgot, already forgot it, I don't really care. Rainmaker. Um, yeah, Rainmaker on, Rainmaker on Crab, Leg. <laughs> well, I forgot the second half of the name, basically. Rainmaker on Crab, Leg. What do you think Skeps gonna is going to have to do to beat Fote after we just saw what happened to them in the Tower Control game? I... 
They they need they need bombs. They need to stay on the map right there. Vote was just getting in, getting the fights, winning the fights, and going forward off of that. Uh, skips. They they like there was a sniper duel, but uh, Jay's on the side of Vote was just the better charge there, and uh, everybody else from the rest of the team was just getting forward, getting the fights, winning the fights. Skips, they, they need to stay on the map, either be a bit more prudent, a bit faster, they need to change from some things to put Vote like on the back foot. Skips, their advantage is that they have tactical, they have the capacity to get back in faster, provided they they play for it, provided they do what they need to do, and right now they they need to go fast and get the splats. I completely agree with you there. I think more splats is going to be more important. Still no tactical on the side of Vote. So that's going to be interesting and see how they're going to play it out here on Raymaker. Tactic Cooler, I think, is a bit better on tower control than it is on Raymaker. So I think it might play out in the favor of Vote as we do see both teams losing one player. But there goes second player for Skips. And this is where Vote is going to pick up the Raymaker. Bubbler, the open at Raymaker push, uh, or open at Raymaker push, and gives it a little bit of free space. Big uses of shooting back. And the first checkpoint is practically already captured. And that, that still push still going. There's no stopping Aloha here in this jet, except for Kenshin. Kenshin coming in and now Kenshin is in position. Skips is going to be able to defend that spot. Deny Vote from getting a bit more than Titali doesn't mind. Oh wait, there's three down onto Skips. Titali is just in there. It's just Kenshin again saving the day. Stopping the push 12 points away. Skips are still alive. 12 points in the first minute, a huge push by Vote, but let's see how Skip's going to respond as they are the ones pushing out with a whole single point on the board. Not a single, well, one player down for Vote, but not enough for Vote to still worrying about. Kenshi goes down, now this is huge, huge news for Aloha because now they <laughs> they can technically jet freely except they use the jet to split <gasps> Kenshin. Tower of Rainmaker only went to 87 points and now he's also in a very good position for Vote to pick up and start pushing that tri slusher is hiding on the little grates, waiting and wait, waiting for Kenshin to make the wrong move, waiting for that Inkjet to be ready as well. Aloha is not all too well, not for is quite far away actually from getting an Inkjet. Tri track coming out as well, stopping that Raymaker a little bit in its tracks, but I don't think it's gonna have the Raymaker fall on the ground as Kenshin gets splattered again. And right now, there's a lot of players down. Uni last standing for Vote. And uh, Kenshin uh, and the rest of Skips are able to get back that ground. Pop the raid makeup. They have yet to get onto me. They were a bit slow. And right now, Vote is back into there. Both snipers are down. And uh, right now, Vote are back forward. Getting control over that platform is pretty good for Aloha. I'm not sure if Skips know that Aloha is here. They don't know! Now they, they don't know! know. Uh, yeah, they learned that the hard way. Aloha is always everywhere with that little tri slush and is being an absolute menace to Skips. Sunji gets or yeah, is it Sunji? Sunji gets a decent mm -hmm. on Aloha, but way too late. Again, the middle on the map is still in full control by Fote and Skips is just trying to get a hold of that ground. We've passed the halfway mark here and Skips just hasn't really been able to make a move. Two players down though, because of the Raymaker shield, this might be the moment, but there's also two players that just respawned for Skips. So I don't think as long as Jay is there, that the push is going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, and right now, Fote are everywhere. Maintaining the threats all around and making sure that Skips cannot do anything too down onto Skips. Again, they're just fighting for dear life, but Verte are keeping control. Pelly is cornered, has to jump away thanks to the cooler at least. But look at that, the whole middle of the map is for Verte right now. Yeah, this is nowhere Italy, to go for Skips. Aloha Ooh. goes down though, Kenshin also goes down, Tiddly in a big flank, Bubbler out of the field, Ooh. huge Bubbler to protect themselves, gets splattered by Sungajou but got a hold of Peli, that's gonna be good news for Vote again because that's one push over, again stopped, that Skips could have had and now they're just waiting for the opportunity uh, for Skip members to go mm -hmm. in and take a pick off one by one, Skips is not having the best day of their life, one minute remaining, 
to get themselves to that win. And they need it because otherwise they'll be out into single elimination brackets in paddling oh. pool here. Yeah, but finally Skips were able to get a few picks to get something to grab the Rainmaker and go forward. They are at the checkpoint and they managed to get it 40 seconds left and finally Skips are in a position to go forward to make points. But now they need to go forward and Verte are defending strong Jays in position holding that Rainmaker here. And now, now it's all about defense. But they are grabbing the Rainmaker and are bringing it back as far away from Skips as they can. Yeah, why wouldn't they? There's no reason for Skips to hold on to the Rainmaker. Aloha is better than predicament though. Getting his planet in time. Yes, they can. But also only Penny Ooh. alive. And the wipeout at the end will make sure Skips is never grabbing that Rainmaker and will advance Vote into the next round of battling pool and that's a clean 2-0 for Votek will consider if they're going to advance and uh, um, I've seen this before skips they are skipping right to out of this tournament GG's big big plays here from mm -hmm. uh, from Votek Kenshin however I think was one of the MVPs of skips especially getting Big splits on people like Aloha, whilst they're in jet. Tiddly here, not giving a single damn about that dry strike and just pushing it all the way in Aloha with a big flank like they always do. Big, big game for Votes. Ask Vote. I, I see you say, French is weird, <laughs> man. Oh, why do you why do you have a silent Z? A silent Z! It's so you know it's A and not. Uh, it could have course. been it could have been an H or like a little sign on the on the on the E, but no. Oh yeah, yeah. There, there's tons of ways we could have gotten that sound. <laughs> it's French. We're crazy. <laughs> you did. I know. I've I've been there like fifteen times. <laughs> great food. Great food, by the way. Gonna 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 give you this. Yep, and uh, that's going to be round number two. We'll be right back in round number three for the quarterfinals. Do not go anywhere.
Welcome back everybody to Paddling Pool number 262. My name is Hat and I'm still here with the lovely, lovely Pat. And we are going to watch ASC Tenchi against Chipotle, who I heard is essentially Mango Hack Mac, but now in their favorite uh, American fast foods. It's like half, it's like half of Mango Hack Mac, right? Yeah, half a Mango Hack Mac, half pickup. And uh, yeah, there it is. These are players that come to Paddling Pool often. We, we've seen what they can do. Ace Tenshi and the Ace Gang has been going stronger and stronger. Uh, these last few, I mean, they're, they're always growing stronger and it's a pleasure to see them still being so high level, so good. And uh, yeah, they're going to start on a good old classic that's Plat Zone on Macomart. I think I can't go a single tournament without this map mode combo. It's like a drug, yeah. you know. And I need, I need, I need to have it. It is competitive mm -hmm. platoon lore. It's like what, what Urgent Underpass or something. Or uh, yep. Flutter Heist was this platoon one. It's just like lore as we have platoon lore. A tournament cannot be a tournament without a single communication issue. Shoutouts to the platoon one servers. They died for this. Yep, and we're going to remake the lobby, and our <laughs> players will be, <laughs> will be right there in a second. Yeah, wow! I really, really love Splatoon for this. <laughs> I, I truly do. I truly do. It's, it's, it's sort of like when I, um, when my girlfriend started playing Splatoon, right? I told her like, hey, you might experience some communication errors if there's a lot it might be you if it happens sometimes then it's okay uh and she said she specifically said why did you mention this and i told <laughs> her like at this point in time the splatoon's disconnects and communication issues aren't a bug they're a feature of the game yeah it, it it's like the hackers in tf2 it's part of the <laughs> game <laughs> it's part of it it really is it really is and nintendo has tried time and time again to fix it but as long as they running, keep running peer-to-peer -peer servers, they're not gonna fix it. <laughs> they're yeah, really yeah. not. So uh, uh, it's, it's unfortunate. It's whole, think, but... Yeah, it's part of it. Uh, it's part of why we love that that quirky little game. But yeah, hey, hat! All the players are back in the room. They are going to be ready right away because they've already selected their weapons. So they're all going to be press A and we're going to be able to start the game right now. Now. Oh, come on, guys. Press A, please. Come on, press A, please. Please, <laughs> you've, been a. you've been there. You, you've been there. You've been there. ASC Tenshi. You've been there, Chip Chipotle. Come on. We've all played Paddling Pool at least once in our life. I don't I think. think I have. You have not? You should. You really should. I... Uh, oh, yes, yes, I played it once, I think. It's, it's, it's just one of those things where like, I have to play Paddling Pool at some point. Like, but I'm always busy casting it! Well, yeah, I mean, I don't play it anymore, but I, I used to play Paddling Pool. I got second a couple times, I think. At least once. My team won it the That's one nice. night I wasn't there. <laughs> That's... That's always like mixed feelings because you're happy your team won, but <laughs> they won. I was, I, was, I was in voice chat enjoying it. Oh, okay. Shout out, shout out to Lean. I remember Lean was in there, Rocket, and that's it. Lean's Man. awesome. Remember when I was in a team with Lean? That's that's long ago. That's how we became friends, actually. Anyway, um, AC Tenshi. Chipotle, make a mart. Common strategies, definitely double cooler. You, you mm -hmm. can't have this without double cooler. It's it's just it's that strong. You need it. Probably double Zuka as well because it's that strong. You need it. <laughs> and I think we're gonna see a bubbler because you know, for, put it in the middle, put it on the front, put it in the enemy base. It'll do the job just fine. Yeah, and here we go, all eight players are in there, Tsuki is bringing that splat thrower. Meanwhile, Tenshi with the usual double bucket composition are in there, and as you called it, double tactic cooler is of course here. Double tactic cooler, and both teams running, I believe, double Zuka as well, which will make yep. this interesting, and I don't think we have a bubbler, so I got that one wrong. I was also using tri-strikes. So good specials on either side of the teams. Let's see who can utilize the Tacticooler double Zuka a little bit stronger. 
as Ace Tenchi loses the player, so does Chipotle. Ace Tenchi scored some points onto the zone. Not a whole lot. As Chipotle was going in, losing two players there. Huge push for Chipotle. As, uh, sorry, a huge push for Ace Tenchi as they are the first ones to really capture the zone and start pushing some big points onto it. Yeah, and right now Tenchi, are, they are in control and they have like much more than the control of the zone they have a continuation lucky is just harassing that ledge making sure that est cannot get out of here cannot get that push and right now tenchi are always the to 40 points away from victory and chipotle are struggling to get in yeah they're trying their best but tasty tenchi is holding such a mm -hmm. strong grasp on the defense my change oh. here though as Chipotle is definitely going in, putting oh. Spark under that zone. Bubbler! Ah, it was a bubbler. <laughs> oh, it was Ruder. It was a bubbler. Bubbler out of that zone. Help them at least <laughs> capture it. And I see one of my spot in my eye. A disconnect from AFC Tenchi whilst they are reading rule state that they cannot. They cannot uh, stop and replay because they already scored way, way past 50 points. That is a huge loss. For a Tenchu, now either is going to stop or going to have to try to recapture the zone, but someone ended the battle, and I think that point by the rules might go to Chipotle? Uh, I'm pretty Big sure, because, because it was Tenchi who had the score so far and Chipotle didn't, I'm pretty sure Tenchi has the rights to get a replay per the uh, double production rules. The double production rules are specific with that, but we're going to wait uh, for confirmation from our TOs on that front, but I think this should be a replay. I'm gonna read the rules. You, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at... Uh... Um. Each team... Oh, it hasn't been... Okay, so each team gets one DC player per tournament. Replays are allowed at the time. It hasn't passed three minutes. Or object has been pushed past 50 by the non dc team. Okay, so they technically still get a replay. I think. Yeah, they should get a replay. They should get a replay for that, yeah. That's so unfortunate, though, for AC Tenshi. They had it in the bag, and then... Yeah, they, they had such a strong opening. They had the control of the map. They had the dynamic. And uh, Chipotle was really struggling to to go forward to take anything back, and there, then they get the DC. Then that's that's such a, a, a sad way to lose the game. At least they get to replay that game, but uh, but like right now, the, the whole question is: uh, can can they keep all four players in the room for the whole duration of the game? It's uh, I mean they can't they can't get a replay anymore. So if they lose it now, then they're kind of screwed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right now it's it's uh it's going to be tough for them, but they've shown that they have the talent if they're able to uh to really stay in the lobby and and keep their ground. They they're in a very good spot to win that game. They really are. They might even be in a good spot to uh, to win the tournament. Uh, I just got a little message. Now, I'm not gonna from from our little streamer, from our streamer Brownie. Shout out to Brownie, by the way, big mm -hmm. big boss Brownie. Always putting in the good work. Little funny message. So I'm not gonna read it, but it's really it was really funny what he what he said. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get this game going again. Let's Brown. Uh, sorry, yeah, as Brownie said, turn take three. Of this set, let's see if Chipotle can score some points now against Ace Attention. Chipotle looks like they're gonna score some points here. Mm. As they are faster, all of the so they now know the strategy of Ace Attention and they're going to use it against it as the machine goes down. Although it's weak and disconnected again. There's there's no replay oh. anymore. They have to finish this. And this is absolute bust. This is an absolute bust for them because this is not how they imagined this game was going to do to be. Yeah. But now it's three v four. It's the only way to decide if Ace Attention can win it. Will be. Amazing if they do, but against the half of Mango Hackmack, I don't think that it's gonna happen. Yeah, and right there, this is this is a tough one for Tenshi. This is pretty much Chipotle, like taking control, getting game number one, and uh, yeah, 
Uh, that's... That's a sad one, like, I, I don't see Tenshi getting back in there, especially now with just 30 points left and uh, all of Chipotle in very, very strong position right there. The strikes are not enough to neutralize the zone. Um, yeah, that, that's that's sad to see, but please, please, at some point you, you, you can stop blaming the game and get a wired connection. Yeah, I mean, maybe they have a wired connection. Isn't Avu from France? Yeah. Look, you see... That explains it. Oh. <laughs> ah, man, that was dumb. I was fooling. It was always a trend that, oh, French internet connection uh, is very good. <laughs> it's well. Yeah, well, all right. It's, now, all, it's, always, it's always the French. Yeah, sure, sure. No, but this, this actually really really hurts for AC Tenshi because they had a very good first game and then the disconnects just blew it into the water. It, it, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna be it's, yeah. it's not even gonna hurt. It's annoying as well because you you're you're doing so so much your best and then it's just it's taken away from you in an instant. There's nothing they can do about it. So they lost the first game unfortunately. Now they have to get the second game on. And the third game as well. They have to like reverse Sweep this little best of three. That's gonna that's gonna be difficult because uh, Chipotle is now fired up. They are ready, and Albo rejoined, but you know he read, he already disconnected twice, so mm -hmm. might not be so stable. Yeah, then she cannot use the the disconnect replay again, and uh, that's that's dangerous, especially since Albo has shown like okay this. This is not working. I hope, I hope that I will during that game, during the time that the rest of Tenshi took to, to lose that game, restarted their router, <laughs> tried to, to shake things up a bit, move, move the switch a few, a, a few centimeters, like make sure you get a bit better signal. I don't know. Sacrifice a chicken, maybe. Do anything. But right now we're going to go to Clam Blitz on Iltel Alley. This is... Oh, I, I, we don't see this Clam Blitz map that often. This is a good map for Tenshi. They're the ones who chose to play on this map, but they have to win on this map, and they have to keep all four players in the lobby if they want to do so, because uh, Chipotle is not going to let them get away with three players. No, it's not. Clam Blitz is, is not going to happen. Tower control and, 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 and Splat Zones, maybe... Rainmaker, if you can win the fights, it'll be a bit slow, but you can. And the checkpoint helps a lot, but but with Clam Blitz, no chance, no no shot. Mm. You need those teammates to to score clams consistently with three. It's so difficult. Yeah, it's very difficult. Indeed, but here we go. This is match point for Chipotle. Chipotle, all they need to do is win this one and they move forward into semi-finals. And uh, right now, Tenshi, they, they drop the backline. They bring a Rapid Pro Deco with the Dart and the Killer Whale. That's that's such a cool semi-backline weapon, honestly. I mean, with especially how long and narrow this map is, I can completely see this this rapid pro actually working, or just yeah, rapid pro deco actually working, and that's that that uh, that that killer wall 5.0 5.1 might actually do some crazy damage against those people who cannot really move away. Unfortunately, however, there aren't a lot of specials to take advantage of this because you know there's no crap mm -hmm. tank to to the you know, splat because that's fast uh -huh. and slow, so they have to gonna have uh -huh. to make do, but still uh -huh. another disconnect uh -huh. and uh oh uh oh. Uh -huh. In the middle of my sentence, too. Yeah, that's is it. A, is it a woo again? Yeah, it's a woo again. Uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, okay, okay. Let's be positive. We still have a minute or four minutes left, and Chipotle doesn't have a power clam yet. So maybe if AC Tenshi can defend Ooh. for the next three, mi three minutes and fifty-five oh. seconds, Hat. they Hat. can win by luck. But no, <laughs> that's. No, that's going I mean, to I, be like not like at this I, level, not with these players. I once had a had a Clamlets game. It's not not in a tournament, in like ranked. 
and not a, not, no team score a single point for the entire game. It just ended and gave one random team a single point. Yeah, I know, uh, and like there, there's specific rules on that. The, the team that makes the most super clams wins the tie after three minutes of uh, overtime, if 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 needs be. But uh, right now, right now, Tenshi, uh, I mean, they, they, there isn't a way for them to get back in. They and uh, Chipotle are just like with all the clams, with the cooler and the bubbler. Right under the basket, they're going to put the clubs in, and there isn't much that Tenshi can do. They're fighting till the very end, and you have to respect that. They're here to play, they're here to show what they're able to do, and they're showing it. They're fighting as well as they can, they're getting the fights in, but at some point, with one less players, you're constantly in a 1v2, and that's going to be it, that's going to be the end, and that's going to be Chipotle winning. Thanks, I mean. That, that's not a result you can put on a bio. That's not a result no. you're happy with. But uh, at some point, we take those. We we go forward and uh, congrats to Chipotle. They're in semis. I mean, there's not a lot, not a whole lot that they really could have done. And I think mm. they definitely did their best. So, big shout out to AC Tenshi for still trying even with the three before. I don't think that's how they anticipated uh, their paddling pool to the end just that drastically, unfortunately. <laughs> But uh, it's a it's good for Chipotle. However, uh, free rounds aren't always that good because you definitely cool off a little bit, uh, and not in a positive way. So Chipotle moves up to the to the to the fight to the semis. So did AA uh, Assassination. Is it Assassination? Yeah, AA, A sorry AA Association Esports. <laughs> the Angel. So now just wait for Vote and Maple Syrup, and we also. Wait for Road to plus one by playing weeklies. That's a good name. And ASC Shokai. So we'll wait for those teams to get their spot at the semis yep. and we'll be right back.
and welcome back to Padding Pool 262. We are now in semi finals. This is the top four teams in this tournament, and we've seen uh, we've had a bunch of um, of uh, overtakes of teams beating their seeds and doing better than they were supposed to. Coffee plus maple syrups beat Vote pour Concede. And, uh, and are now in semi-finals going against AEA who beat Blue Comet. Like both of these teams are bunching like higher than they than we thought and are now fighting to get their spot in the finals. Yeah, I see some good, good Splatoon gameplay here. We saw a lot of good Splatoon gameplay today already. Unfortunately, our last set on stream mm -hmm. wasn't really one of those sets Especially AC Tenchi wants to remember, but now we're gonna have this great, great match. Let's see how these two teams are gonna fare out because they are ready and fired up, like you said, beating two higher seeded teams. In fact, both of them also 2 owed their opponents, so it mm -hmm. wasn't it wasn't a little bit of beating. That's strong, strong score for both of these, especially for AA Association. As Blue Comet is one of those teams where, like, I, I mean, actually, to be fair, it's for both. Yeah, it's for both. It's it's for both teams. It's a very, very good score. Anyway, it is our lovely little cup noodle wrap map Robo Ramen, which I still love that name very, mm -hmm. very much. Let's see what these teams are going to bring because this map has a very odd place clam basket and you can go below so flanking is going to be of the essence here to stop people people from collecting those clams we see a 96 deco and a spatana regular old spatana and a very funny pick always it is the pencil let's see what these teams can do with these weapons kraken is going to be very very yeah. interesting when they're gonna push that clam. Hot. how often do you see a crack on roller coming uh, on, on the ground. I don't. I feel like I haven't seen this weapon it, since pretty much since it came out in the I game. I haven't seen this weapon since Platoon 1, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> that's, much. That's how long I haven't seen, been seeing the the 96 Deco. I mean, it's always a lovely weapon to use when the... What's it called? When the shot spread doesn't match you up. Ooh. Big splat by that 96 onto the pencil. Gets sweeped straight away but that, by, the, by the roller, but that's a very, very very good splat honestly and they opened oh, yeah. up a lot of opportunities for Ma for coffee plus maple and syrup who are now preparing to capture the whole mid the tactic cooler went out as well try strike to stop the tactic cooler from existing and from being picked up huge splats by risu looking at the flanks checking if they're safe they are safe two players essentially down for coffee and maple syrup as well as if responded with the tactic cooler make sure Ooh. they get back quickly and again nothing and nothing really happens for Cup mm -hmm. Maple Syrup other than some technical buffs were lost. But let's see how a association is going to handle this at seven power clamps at a very, very decent spot with the pencil. Yeah, right now both teams are fighting pretty hard, but Coffee are in control of me. They have me painted yellow, and now they're putting the tactic cooler down. They're trying to go forward, trying to find that way in, and with two specials. At the ready, we could expect something going soon, though. Mickey is just stopping things right here, right there, getting splat after splat and getting in. There's a lot coming right there. What moves by Mickey and AA, AA are under the basket with a Kraken and the strikes. That's going to be an opening, and that's already some points in there but coffee and maple syrup are answering in kind only 26 points have been scored and uh team yellow is back on the field two whole clams and a power clam is not a whole lot of points you want in that opening push your only push where you can push without a penalty so that's kind of a rough mm. rough patch for ace a association Took a long time for any team to push though, so hey, any score at this point is the leading score and can my can as well be the winning score. But now Maple Syrup has the power climb at the ready. The Kraken goes out, but May is fighting, falls down. This is a moment for the Kraken to get to the basket, get to the basket. Now people just have to jump to them and jump they do, but the angle of Turk is very awkward. They get hit into the basket and have to throw three clams in, but there's not a single clam there. There's nobody from a Maple Syrup. They to capitalize onto that push, mm -hmm. onto that open basket, and this push is even worse off than AA Association. Very, 
Very mm -hmm. big mid judgment by a uh, coffee and maple syrup, and this might cost them as a push from a association pad oh, is already oh. happening with three players down on maple syrup side. Yeah, on the right now, AEA are getting in and they're bringing lots of clans. 27 points left. Coffee is Ouch. taking a huge blow right there. That really bad push with their Kraken and their super jump. Like, they paid two players just to not get the lead. And right now, AEA are really, really get, making the best off of that. And they're getting even more splats now. They're again under the basket, again with so much control. They just need a super climb and they should be able to reopen the basket. They are in a huge, huge lead and huge controlling position right now. Well, yeah, they get the power climb at the ready, so they might as well throw it in if they'd like to. Tech the cooler is up, but there's Kraken is nowhere near charged. It's going to have to delay a little bit until that crack at already tri strike does come out though. Pushing the players of Cough Maple Syrup a little bit back, but not far enough. Kraken is now online at ready. Second power claim is about to be created. The Kraken is going in, looking for some damage instead of making being a jump point. Very, very good because the other Kraken is also on the field. Power claim does get into the basket. Only does some points for their penalty, not a whole lot in actual point scoring. What it does allow is waste some time because Maple Syrup now has to actively defend their basket or to tell everyone else in order to move away because any other points will, of course, make the basket stay open longer. Maple Syrup now has a power climb, but only 15 seconds to get it into the basket and start scoring some points. They, in fact, have two power climbs, but how are they going to push this here, Pat? What do you think they're going to do in order to try and win this huge, huge 27 lead? Coffee and maple syrup, they need something big, but right now it's just Ange, and it's a wipe out. That's the end of that game. AEA completely dominated this one. And coffee and maple syrup, if they want to get back in for, for the next games, like they, they have to switch things up. They have to change what they do, how they do it, because this is not working. No, it is really really was not working this is one of those games again they probably don't really want to remember anytime soon after this exact moment this is not how they expected their night to go but they still have a couple games left it is counter pick so they can pick out the next map a mode and you know mm -hmm. robot roman is one of those things where um you gotta you have to really like this or <laughs> or not <laughs> yeah but now Pat, we're in semi-finals and that means it's best of five and it's counter pick there are opportunities for coffee and maple syrup to to get their head back in the game to choose a map where they will have like a better way to get in where they can get the counter play against aea they they have to just find themselves okay what are they doing that works what are we doing that doesn't work and how do we we change that it's on them now to reach really switch things up and with two games to get back with the counter pick they they just need to make the right choice they really do and the right choice obviously is splat zones on hang Fish. uh we'll we'll see we'll see <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what they choose. I don't think they'll come back to Clam Blitz. Clam Blitz was really not working for them. I I, I feel like they, they want something a, a bit different. And, oh yeah, we, we're going on Ship Ship Cargo Co. For Stones. You need to report it on Sandu. Yes. Is it? Wow. Wow, damn. Alright, that's a... Uh... Mm -hmm. That's a solid map choice. I'll give them that. You don't see that one all too often. But I I endorse it. They had the Splatana as well. They had the 96 Deco. Mm -hmm. So I fully endorse it. Yeah, they, they have the tools. It's all it's all about winning this fight. It's about taking the map. And if they're able to take that control of the center of the map, they, they can score lots of points. AA though, they like I, I don't feel like they need to change anything. If they're able to to reproduce what they did in the game number one, 
They they just win this game too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I'm just I was I'm just wondering why Crab or sorry Cargo? Why Cargo Co? Out of all maps. It's the map has interesting geometry. The uh the other side above the zones, there, there's lots of plays that can can allow you to switch things up. There are lots of different things that uh, a team that knows how to play it can do. And uh, if you practice it, honestly, there like there are lots of ways to to play that map to your advantage. Now it's all about how how much are they able to to play this map to their advantage. And right now, Mace switched away from the Kraken Roller and is bringing the Cardboard Roller Deco, the much more classic weapon to bring uh, to a Splatoon game. Yeah, I think this is more of uh, what it should be. I mean, still, it's a Garden Roller, you don't shoot it too often as well, so uh, I'll commend them for sticking with the Rollers, but they have Maple Syrup here, instantly grabbing that zone and starting to push AA Association back as well as they were expecting it. However, they lost the 52, they lost the NZEP, so they might lose here. Hammer goes out with Mikey and the teammates quickly shoot them down, but that Hammer might have just bought enough time for teammates of, of uh, Maple Syrup to respawn and not mm -hmm. left the zone. At least we lost neutral, it's neutralized now and there it finally goes. But a solid 63 as the opening start is a, is a decent push. <gasps> Oh, and right now, three down onto AA. It's just Mikey right there looking to get a few more Zookas, getting the jumps in, but it looks like Coffee and Maple Syrup are still on the map trying to get things. But okay, okay, AEA just able to respawn even faster, get back in there, dodge the Zookas, and right now, AEA is going to get that lead. They really are, and it is not looking good for Maple Syrup as they now have to push hard on their own map of choice. And I think it's a very awkward to push back. Big use of that 50 Ooh. or of that killer wheel. That's a very unique strategy, and I love this. Maybe a little bit of reason why, why they picked this map. Carbord going in deep, mm -hmm. took some damage by the 52. Can they get the splash? Yes, they can get one. They're looking for the second one. The hammer is up there. Reason of being flanked by the Carbord and fighting it. Slush as well, not too good. Only 10 ticks remaining for A Association. Maple Syrup has to do something, and they have to do something now. But only Kiki on the zone, I don't think that's gonna happen. And a solid, yeah. solid strong game for A Association. Oh. Give them the second score of this match. Coffee and Maple Syrups, they had great moves, they had great fights, but every time AA had one final player on the map, and and Coffee, we're not able to clean up. We're not able to confirm the team advantage. We're not able to push AEA out of here. And AEA able to get back in, to respawn, to super jump in. They were constantly keeping their presence on the map and able to, to not allow Coffee and Maple Syrup to really get back in the game, really using the Tacticula to its fullest and super jumping right in the nick of time to, to save it. That's a clean 2-0 for AEA, and now Coffee and, Barrett's, uh, and Maple Syrup, they're, they're back to the wall. It's their final counter pick. Yeah, they have to make a very careful decision because 2-0 this early is not exactly what you really, really want. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, A Association or Maple Syrup was fired up after being the number two seed, but A Association beat the number three. So I don't know how far they are off. Right now, it's uh, it's not looking too hot for Maple Syrup. Yeah, they, they need to get one more splat. Each, like, several times in this game, AA had just one player left on the map, surrounding by people from Coffee and Maple Syrup. But they were not able to seal the deal, to get that final splat that confirms that they get the map advantage. So if Coffee and Maple Syrup are able to just beat that last player or negate that last player, they, they should be able to get the pushes, but right now AEA just able to, to, with one player of the map, make that player on the map count and allow them to, to slow everything that Coffee is doing. Yeah, but they have to fully reverse sweep as well, don't forget mm -hmm. that. That's oh, going to yeah. be even 
that's going to be even tougher, to be honest, because that reverse whip is going to be an absolute nightmare uh, to really pull off. Yeah, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough indeed. And AEA right now, they look... They, they, they're on their way to the final, and they, they're, they're ready to get there. They... I just want to be done with it, and uh, right now they only need one more game. On Rainmaker Undertow, I, I expect Ange with the Wiper to be incredibly dangerous. And uh, that, a, a, they, they cannot like completely fall asleep. They have to make sure that they play as good as they've been playing so far if they want to get victory. Yeah, they have to pull a miracle right now to be victorious and get, you know, the thing they want is to keep in paddling pool. But, you know, what happens now, the problem, I think, with um, mm -hmm. with Coffee Maple Syrup, I think the, the big problem is that every time they get something done, they push a little bit, but then they just get pushed back by AA Association like twice as hard. And then they're yeah. kind of stuck. That's the cycle they've been going down to. The second they look is rolling downhill. So Raymaker can go very, very fast. Maple Syrup picks up the Raymaker first, push it to a, a sick 99 points. I still can't believe that is nine. That is only points. But there we go. Three players down, and now it's AA Association's turn. This is the cycle that has been kind of happening with. Uh, Ma Coffee and Maple Syrup, so they have to break it here, but the Raymaker already at the first checkpoint. Ooh, ooh. Two players down as well, big Suka shot, three players down, and AA Association is still going strong into the push. Raymaker popped for that second time, grabbed, and moving ooh. forward. It's already almost at the point. It's 15 points, and AA Association is still not done pushing path. Finally losing a couple players, and the Raymaker is now getting out of there, but 15 points within the first minute is a huge start for that's, AA Association. That's indeed a huge opening push. Coffin Maples are able to bring the Rainmaker back into mid, but now they have such an uphill battle to get into just in order to get back in the game. And right now it looks so tough for them. Two down, three down. AA. Ah, in control, Jess, able to get one with Vazuka, but now everybody knows where Maple Syrup is. Um, AEA is going to push that Rainmaker forward again. That Ultra Stop is going to get two at least, and uh, Ange is able to stop some Dream Stop, a push right there. Coffee and Maple Syrup not out of it yet, yet. but they need a big push. They need to get more splats than that, and they need to get beyond mid if they want to get some points yeah they have to get into mid like you said but they're still struggling to get even past the midway point even out of their spawn really they're finally getting out and popping a rainmaker but that's mm -hmm. only because aa association is back a little bit slowly they're giving the credit self some space creating some more special and forcing maple syrup to make pushes they don't really want to do and it's paying off a little bit Two players down on some Maple Syrup again as AA Association is just stalling a little bit, waiting for players to get splatted in order to start pushing themselves. Now the 52 is in danger, getting spotted by that Carbon Road or throw Burn at them to do some damage. 52 sort of got away with it, but now pushing even back even further. They have to get out. Good spell on Gecko though, and now hopefully Maple Syrup can finally start pushing for some big points. Yeah, it is their opportunity. They are finally getting that Rainmaker near that checkpoint. And with all the players here, they are going to be able to get through it. That is a huge checkpoint to get. Now Maple Syrup, all they need is one good push. All they need is a wipeout. All they need is to get these few splats. That's going to allow the Rainmaker to go forward, but they cannot falter now. They have two minutes to get that push on right now. The Rainmaker is finally grabbed, but two down. Geku with the Slusher is just cleaning up. Two down, three down. That's four in a row by Geku. Not getting the Rainmaker, but it's just Ench with the Rainmaker here. 
but is so tough. They have to wait for the jumps now. And with the strikes coming in, that's going to be the end of that push. AA are holding the defense strong right there. Risu is fighting, but not fighting enough. Yeah, it's, uh, they're trying so hard. This might be... This might be a chance mm -hmm. for Maple Syrup if they can keep that Raymaker alive. It's despotting now. Oh, Kiki, it's unfortunate. They were touching it, but not fast enough. The Raymaker respawned in the middle. That's gonna hurt because only one minute remains, and now they have to get the Raymaker all the way back to the center point or to the checkpoint, which doesn't sound like a lot of points, but if you fight against AA Association in the current position that Maple Syrup is in, oh. that is like climbing Mount Everest. Oh. Especially with a few players down already. AA is back into me, back to winning this fight. With 30 seconds left, that Raymaker is going to reset from mid to mid. And uh, right now, AEA, all they need to do is hold that control. They get the Reaper, but they don't even need to grab that Raymaker. All they need to do is not get splatted right now, and the game is theirs. Ench is going to destroy that carbon water thanks to the, the ultra stun though. That's a good start. The Rainmaker is grabbed and now we have overtime. But Coffee and Maple Syrup, they cannot do a single mistake now. They need it all. They need a huge, huge push and it's starting now. Yeah, this can have still happen. Overtime Splatoon has done miracles for teams. But now Kiki's being pushed back. There goes Gecko with the slasher. Can he hit over that block? And with that, and Zuka that quickly swooped, swooped up that splat. It is game over for Coffee and Maple Syrup. As our team called AA Association will move themselves up to the finale of Battling Pool 262. Yeah, we... They are not qualified. We are still waiting on the other semi-finals to uh, complete. But yeah, that was just coffee and maple syrup trying all they could. Having a few good moves, having a few good pushes, but all every time uh, shut down, destroyed, and Gekku with the slosher absolutely shutting that game down, absolutely destroying everything Coffee wanted to do. And uh, honestly, Coffee is better black. I am I, I'm sorry to, to, to say No, it, no, 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 no. You are you are right. You are a hundred percent right. I you don't have to be sorry. Coffee is only good in black, and then maybe after 4 p.m. I'll have a cappuccino. Yeah, maybe, but like... But at that I point, mean... I already had like eight cups of coffee, so... You know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, coffee black is real, is real coffee. Anyway, uh, I think we're going on a little break until we get to the final. So don't go anywhere, as this is going to be a hell of a final Splatoon match.
welcome back. We're back her early because uh, we are watching the other semi-finals. They, they've started without us because we didn't ask them to, to wait for us. And uh, but like they're still playing. This is going much longer, and this is closer than the other semi-finals. Road to plus one. And Chipotle are now 1-1. One, one. We saw Chipotle earlier. They're pretty good. And Roto Plus 1, they're, they're the top seed and they're pretty much a Frutella pickup. Yeah, you here? <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Sorry, I was reading I was reading a tweet on the internet. Uh, it wasn't... It wasn't that funny. Um, it, was <laughs> it wasn't... It was a very interesting... Anyway, yeah, I wrote my Road to Plus One by playing weekly. I love this name. I want to mention this to you. I love this name so much. I hope there are eight members. Is it nine? Well, it's, it's anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. I hope there are eight members all get to Plus One. I believe in them. Yeah, they're, they just they're getting there. <laughs> they just have to win. They just have to win. Every single oh, yeah. week from now on. Oh yeah, uh, if you want to get a plus one, you better win paddling pool right now. Uh, but right now they're one one, and uh, Chipotle is giving them a run for their money. We we're now waiting for Chipotle to get the counter pick because uh, the last game was won by a road to plus one on flounder zones. Apparently, I wonder why. And uh, yeah, we we're going to wait for that counter pick, and it's going to be back of zones. Yes, Mecco Zone's always a mm -hmm. good, lovely map. You can't go wrong with it. We've seen it earlier today. You cannot go wrong with Mecco Zone. <laughs> you really can't. Yeah, it's it's a classic. It's a classic map where lots of different weapons, lots of different strategies will work. Uh, against Road to Plus One, I think it could be dangerous because... Uh, these players, uh, I know they like their flank routes, and uh, Mac Zones gives you lots of flanks opportunities. They do. I mean, it's also not a map. People know it, especially if they play Splatoon 2 a lot. People mm -hmm. know the ins and outs of Mac Mart. And even yeah. if you don't play a lot of Splatoon, we all know the ins and outs of Mac Mart because we all go to the grocery store to get groceries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> that helps. Of course, of yeah, course. Don't, yeah, don't don't you flank from pillar eight, or like from from block A to block B on the grocery store whilst you are holding a giant yeah. golden fish. That's something uh, you like, do every like Tuesday, right? Come on, let's be. I feel like every time you go to grocery shopping, the cops are involved. Um. So anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> I may or may not have been reported for stealing something. I have never stolen anything from the grocery store, at least not on purpose. I don't condone stealing Game from the is starting! Store. Game is starting! Let's stop game talking starting. Game about that! Don't <laughs> steal, kids. You wouldn't download a car. Uh, anyway, uh, Road to Plus One by playing with these and Chipotle. Chipotle is... We saw them earlier. They were playing quite strong, but unfortunately they really lost out on AC10, she said, because of this <laughs> next by Abu. I mean, they want it, but they kind of lost out on playing that set, so let's see how they're going to fare right here on Mako Zones. It looks like Roto Plus One is the first team to really get some points on Zone, but Chipotle quickly turns it around. But no, it is Roto Plus One, because the Zone is going left and right. Host Roto Plus One is the first team to catch the point. Crab Tank help pushing everyone from Chipotle away. But the first two people finally get splatted, and two of them are on Chipotle. One of them is on Road to uh, plus one, the second player on that team also Ooh. just got splattered. Two Inksukas fighting each other. That's always a good duel to see, but Chipotle just cannot seem to really dive into Ooh. Road to plus one. Come on, it is cursed. The second I said that, they scored or they claimed the zone. They claim more than the zone. They have most of the map. And look at that. They're trying to get in, trying to run up there, but uh, at least. Road to plus one able to spawn back in, able to get their own ground back. And with that crab tank, they should be able to get to the zone. But Chipotle is getting that lead right now. And uh, Road to plus one are, are counter pushing. They are now getting the neutral, applying penalty, but uh, they have some points to get back. They have some penalty to get rid of. Yeah, they have 
not a big penalty, but a little penalty. Uh, but enough to be annoying and enough for Chipotle to respawn and get their specials back in order to start a fighting. And now that penalty has been over and that lead has been retaken and it's Chipotle's game to lose once mm -hmm. again. Road to Re or I keep saying Road to Rebirth because that's a festival we're going to. <laughs> Road to plus one, however, doesn't have a single special and ready to plus three players and a full fat wipe out in Dutch to the Sharks. They go as Chipotle also gets rid of their penalty surely but surely and is ready to take on Road to plus one because they have a special at the ready and whoever had the special at the ready for Road to plus one got splattered so that special is delayed a little bit. Yeah, right now Chipotle are in control and they're holding that control, that big bubbler helped with it pretty well. And right now Roto Plus One are trying to find a way and trying to deny the lead, but the lead is going to swap. And Chipotle are still around, Itsuki is getting that trade, but right now Roto Plus One have players advantage, are getting that zone back and are establishing defensive position now. Yeah, they're preparing for the counter push from Chipotle because they have the lead, so they're going to be pushing hard to mm -hmm. stop Rotor Plus One from getting that lead back. Once again, big super Ooh. shot by uh, by Zen. Second super shot coming out. Try strike over the counter though, Suka, and delay the people from Rotor Plus One for going in. Ooh. Or from Chipotle to be going in because they're only two ticks away from getting the lead. Can Chipotle stop the guy? No, they can't. 26 ticks and a 45 penalty. Oh, this is Chipotle they have to get rid of. This is, is a game going right. Back and forth, neck on neck, two points differing these teams from a potential victory and we still have mm -hmm. minute and 45 seconds left on the clock here, Pat. This is absolutely insane. I mean, they, they got the lead that at what cost right now Chipotle has the control and they don't have that much penalty left. They're, they're about to get that lead right back and the Rotor Plus One need a huge push. That Crab Tank is a good start for that. They're able to get there, but they don't know that Trey is in ambush, trying to... Oh, wait, never mind, Trey is nowhere. And right now, Road is back. <laughs> they're back on the road, they're back with a wipeout, they're back to with a vengeance. It's their turn to hold the map. But they don't have that much penalty either. They need to hold it for just 30 seconds and they should get the lead. Yeah, they, it's gonna be, gonna be tough, it's gonna be tough because... Chipotle already is pushing back 13 points to 24 and the penalty has been gone for Road to Plus One. They can start pushing again. Ooh. They're only a couple points away from Ooh. getting a lead once again. There's not a single bit of ink from Chipotle on the zone. The lead has been swapped again, but Chipotle Ooh. goes in and takes back this zone. Unbelievable stuff. Can they hold it until the lead? This is going to be tough. I think it's the first time it will switch back before the penalty is taken care of. Not entirely sure as Chipotle again captures that zone. Trisuka on it as well to defend it. Three oh players down Ooh. on the side of Road to plus one. Will Chipotle get that lead back again and potentially knock out only 10 penalty points remain here, Pat? This is unbelievable stuff here at Petley. The hints two teams are so back and forth, but right now two down onto the road. Chipotle keeping the control, getting the lead, and cleaning up right now. Oh, it's just it's oh, there's no way! Oh, oh my gosh! Oh it's my not god! Over. It's, it's not over. over. Pat, it's not can over. You but this? We're in overtime now. Chipotle, all they need to do is to paint, and with a wipeout, all they need to do is paint the zone right now. They are okay. They're camping the jumps, neutralizing the zone, and that's going to be game for Chipotle. One to nine. What a game! I guess this oh is why gosh. these two teams were taking their time going one uh, one. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. I know now. If the other two matches before this were this close, then oh boy, we are in for a powerful, powerful semi finals. What a game by both teams. There's nothing they could have done differently right there. Absolute crazy stuff here at Petling Pool. Yeah, I can't believe the fact that Road to Plus One got that right at the end. And a sliver of hope with three seconds remaining, capping that zone and wiping out Chipotle is absolutely stunning. This is... It can only really happen in Splatoon. Yeah, it was 
It's proof and a reminder that it's never over, that you need to play till the very last second, till the very last frame. There's always a drop of ink to put on the map, anything you can do. This was so close and until after the last second, both of these teams were close to winning it. But Chipotle, again, getting 2-1. About to get the upset, it's now on road to plus one to get the counter pick, and uh, and this now they, they need to win two games against this Chipotle team if they want to to get away with it. But Chipotle is about to to put that road to an end and get to plus one themselves. Yeah, they really have to get to plus one, but I don't think this is the way because you have to win the ways to get to plus one. You don't have to just. Oh, yeah join them but i think i think they have a fair shot i really think they have a fair shot of uh mm -hmm. of winning it they I have mean, to go to they've shown but both of these seen both of these teams have shown that they have a fair shot at winning this set this is close this is very much hard fought and we're, we're still waiting on road to plus one's counter pick they're gonna take a sweet time because they mm -hmm. have to make sure they get the right map in. They cannot just pick any any old map. They have to make sure they get the right one. Because, uh, well, we saw it go... <laughs> I, I mean... I guess? Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's it's a solid map. It's a map people know. And if you want to recenter yourself, focus. You know it's decided by like small things. When when you're you're back you're down go go with a classic go with a uh, known quantity you know yeah just stick stick with the old stick with the known I know however I'm a bit surprised it's not split zones again I think they want to switch it up a little bit to not mm. have a repeat <laughs> of the last game I don't I think they're like yeah maybe maybe not uh yeah I, I think you're not allowed to uh to go back to a zone uh you the, the last the last mode you won on you're not allowed to counter pick so they were not allowed to counter pick zones ah no, that makes sense yeah yeah and if they, they win this one chipotle will not be allowed to counter pick zones so we will not see more zones in this set good because we're ready to see enough zones nah. In, uh, in I two love two. zones. Give me more zones. Infinite zones. I mean, I love Clamblitz a lot. The SU team or Clamblitz? Where, where's, where's more Clamblitz? The, the only thing that I don't like about zones is inside order. Because they're so slow, these zones levels, and I hate that. But in PvP, zones is so good. But here we go. Uh, you see that? Did you see that? One. Yeah, that's you a heavy that thing. Ooh, <laughs> I yeah, like a that edit. a lot. That's an interesting mm -hmm. pick for your tactical gear. But you know what? I support it. I love it. Let's see if the heavy edit can be the difference into getting into plus one or <laughs> being left out to rot in plus two forever, like none. <laughs> Top player, you might be. I've never been in plus one or plus two or plus three, and I don't really care about it. Yep. Anyway, let's see how the team is going to go. Two players go down for road to plus one. That's a third one on the way. That's a fourth one. That's Ooh. a sort of a sweet, uh, not wipeout, but sort of one, two, three, four, getting everyone spelled at least once, kind of kind of vibe. As Chipotle is going for that first checkpoint, try strike, forcing them off and forcing them back quite yep. far, actually, as they touch the tower and reset it back towards the middle. Yeah, very strong third attack by Chipotle, but very, very nice answer by the road. And right now, road to plus one are fighting for mid, are getting these fights, and now they're, they're two down. So I guess because of the tactical, everybody will be back in very soon and we'll see more fights coming. Two down onto Chipotle now. It's going to be road to plus one. Getting the tower, trying to push it, trying to get a few more special points off of it. And with a crab tank deployed onto me, Road to Plus One are still trying to get that ground, trying to get forward. Yeah, they're just doing they're doing their best. Uh, got a couple points here, not a whole lot. They're pushing 
by increments of one. You know, the tur the turtles and the and the what's the thing again? The Easter not Easter bunny. Anyway, uh, I don't, I don't remember <laughs> the English word. Ooh, and, uh, three down. Three down is big. Four road to plus one as they are now preparing for a big push. Crab tag also online. It's not used yet, but it is at the ready to be used the second they might desire to use it. But Chipotle is fighting back on the, on the tower, trying to stop it. Crab tag now activated and online on the trying to get some manners on the field. It is enough to from Chipotle away, but will it be enough to get the lead? They're almost there, and yet it will. The lead is swapped to road to plus one. But if anything is going on, uh, like the last game, mm -hmm. that's default. Be swapping a couple of times. Oh yeah, it is not over for sure, but getting past that first checkpoint is absolutely key for Road Plus One. This is great for them. That checkpoint is tough to get by, especially when your opponent has the defensive capability that Chipotle has. And right now, Chipotle is their turn to get to that checkpoint. They know they'll have to dodge a Zuka shot, they know they'll have to dodge strikes very soon but right now they are setting up their tactical and they're getting to that checkpoint yeah they're Wait. waiting oh. they are yeah. waiting but chipotle is not ready for the crap tank that punchy is about to mm. unleash and that's the scary part of crap tank on tower control you're such a you're such a big target on that small mm -hmm. tower but there's nothing you can do when the crap tank really goes on other than either place a bubbler or go off they have a bubble Chipotle, but it has to be ready at the right time, at the right moment. And defend against Scrap Tank, okay. it will only defend you for that long. So now they're fighting in the middle. They're trying to decide who is going to push the tower next again. It looks like Chipotle <laughs> has sort of decided that they're going to go on with that heavy edit. Might have to say something about that until Ooh. Azuka existed. And right now, Chipotle is in a great position. This is the opportunity to get that first checkpoint. This is the opportunity to get the lead, but they already have, only have one player left. It's a wipeout. They got the lead, but they paid dearly for it. One minute left, though. Road to plus one. They need to use all of that wipeout to get all the ground they can to get the special advantage because they need to get that lead back and they only have a minute to do so. They're on the tower. They have the cooler active. And they are pushing forward right now. Yeah, they are trying to get the lead back indeed. Only a couple mm. points. It happened. That's gonna get the oh, 63! They had to get to the lead again! 45 seconds remaining, and they have to leave it only by three points. Technically four if you know uh Chipotle has to get mm -hmm. past the 50 mark to for the to 49 to really get that lead back. But still, big, big opportunity for Road to Plus One and showing you hey, we're not done. We're still ready to fight, and we're ready to take this game 5 if we have to. Two players down, however, is not so good because Chipotle is again on the tower, and as a history, he's been sort of riding itself yeah. in this game. This will be yet another lead swap. Potentially, Crap Tank used a little bit early, gets an assist Ooh. onto Chipotle. Chipotle does have a bubbler. The bubbler is on the tower at the right moment, at the right time, potentially. Oh. The lead has been swapped again! A wipeout wipe as well to seal the. Deal and Chipotle will be victorious, but I want to say big shout outs to Road to Plus One because they've been playing this game amazingly. And it was a very, very good fight between these teams. A very good fight indeed, but Chipotle just not stopping, not caring that they lost the lead, keeping their head in the game, getting the comeback, and getting the lead back. And getting the three to one. That's that's them punching that ticket to the finals. And I guess we will not get to plus one this week. I don't think we will indeed, unfortunately. But yeah. plus one definitely they can try again next week. Oh yeah. Because Paddling Pool will always be there mm -hmm. every single week. But I think that's goodbye for Road to Plus One. And we We'll take a small little break to set up tonight's grand finale, which will be Chipotle versus AA Association. So stay tuned. We'll be back in a little bit.
what's going on everybody welcome back to padding pool 262 and we have reached the climax of tonight's event we are at the grand grand finale chipotle against aea association esports will it be the team that took advantage of every single little mistake of their opposing team called ea association and absolutely shredded them Whenever they made something, or oh, will it be the team which lead was swapping to the left to the right and it couldn't really hold a stable lead, but Samuel at the end clutched it called Chipotle. We'll have to see. It's gonna start it off at Robot Ramen Splat Zone, which is, I think, a very, very good map to start off a finals like this. Yeah, it's it's going to be a tough one. Both of his teams. They, they got upsets to get here. Both of these teams showed that they, they, they're they strong, that they're able to really switch things up and uh, create some surprises. So it's such a delight to see players rise up to the occasion and uh, show what they're able to do. It's, uh, it's going to be a tough one. Like There's going to be lots of fights. There's going to be lots of pop-off. And we're going to start on Robo Roman for a good old game of Splat Zones. I think Splat Zones also, the game mode, is just so good. Yeah. To have these teams, you know, sort of test the waters with themselves and see what they can do in a Robot Rama like map, which is super flank heavy as well. Also will show the strengths and weaknesses of how aware these teams are of every single scenario that might be thrown up against them. I'm hoping this won't just be a 3-0 like so so many finals but betting mm -hmm. pool might have to say something different about that one uh, here we go chipotle bringing again that uh that roller and uh, meanwhile aea bring back the carbon roller that's going to be battle of the rollers can't wait to see that but uh yeah chipotle they, they have to make do against pencil on the other side meanwhile they don't have uh, a backline of their own. It's all about managing that range, especially on such an open map as Robo Roman. And right now, the range is going in favor of AEA. But Chipotle trying to get in, they get punished for. So far, it's splats left and right, and AEA is going to take first control. Yeah, that pencil is going to be a tough opponent for Chipotle. Like you said, no backline is going to make it extremely difficult for them. To really push in especially when the pencil also has the tactic cooler so they can't really get rid of coolers reliably as well they really have to go to flat two players down however for aa association so this might be the zone capture that chipotle is looking for but can they also get rid of the pencil that is right now the bigger question and so far it looks like the answer is no and right now, both teams are looking at each other. Chipotle in control of the zone, trying to keep it a bit longer. But AEA is back on the fight. It's two versus two right now. And neither team able to really dislodge the other. Gekku trying to get the splats, but Chipotle staying in control of that zone. Penalty is not applied, and now everybody is back in there. But Kulo is in there, but Zuka is ending dreams. AEA is taking the zone, keeping the lead, and now, now it's their turn to defend the zone. Yeah, Zuka was a very good call for Chipotle, but a counter Zuka, the thing from AEA, they were expecting, especially not that fast after they used their first Zuka. Good offensive play by AEA Association to get that lead back. Try strike out as well, the very strong time when Chipotle was trying to push, but now the tech cooler is out on the field. Special, however, is offline. They think it's better before they were able to pick up a tech cooler, so it's not all too good. But there goes Gekku, there goes the roller, Bubbler out in the field though, so it's the little bit of defense against a pencil, but May goes in, gets Trey anyway, and then pushes back a little bit. Only 20 ticks left remaining for AA Association until they win. This game until it's gonna knock out the big Zuka shot to secure that game. I don't think Chipotle will be coming back from that as AEA Association knocks out the first game of this final set. And that's a very strong first game for AEA right now. Like they they just took control of it and the second they were able to, to get the fight for before, it was them. It was them getting the splats, getting the Zookas in their opponent's faces. And right now, AEA, that, that's the kind of opening you want. That's the kind of statement you want to make at the start of this final. Chipotle, 
they, they were able to get some fights. They were able to get some ground, but the second there was that big team fight, like they were not able to follow what AEA was doing. And right now, like the, they, they paid for it and they have, they, they, they need to get back and find that coordination that they had in the semi-final. Yeah, it's uh, gonna be a tough act for Chipotle, but I think they can get it done. They were testing the waters a little bit and they were finding back. The problem is just that pencil is so difficult. If you are against a pencil and don't have one, it's mm -hmm. such a challenge to really push back against it. And that's something hopefully now will be different now. They know exactly what they're up against. Yep, yeah, there's... Clearly, Chipotle, now they, they know what they're fighting against. They know the moves that they need to bring. They know what what they need to do. And uh, they, they've shown before that they're able to play at the highest level. It's all about choosing the map where they know they can get the difference. Where they know they can beat this AEA team. But AEA, they, they've taken the positions, they've won the fights, and right now, you need to find a way to stop them. They do not look stoppable. And we're going to go to uh, Rainmaker on uh, Undertale Spillway. A classic. A classic. AEA knows this one. <laughs> well, it's a classic. Uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's been there since launch, so... By technicality, yes. But AEA, they just played this against... Uh, was it Road? No, it wasn't Road Plus One. I already forgot the name. Uh, against uh, Coffee uh, plus Maple Syrup. And they won this by a long shot. So they have been ready and warmed up for this game. Hopefully Chipotle has something to say about it. They chose it themselves for the last time this was counted against AA Association. Oh, I know that it wasn't going so, so well for a uh, for uh, the opposing team. So mm -hmm. we'll have to see. Yeah, but AEA, right now they're on a roll, they're on a winning streak, they haven't dropped a single game uh, in this top cut. So they're, they're very much fired up, Chipotle needs to end that momentum, and it starts, maybe, hopefully for them, here, they do not bring a backline, but on this map, honestly, this is not a bad choice to not bring a backline. It's all about all of his ledges, and we know that Itsuki with that roller can do things. That being said, May, a carbon roller on this map is an absolute menace. It really is. So is the pencil as well. Long, narrow openings, big, high vantage mm. points for that pencil. It's not the opposing, it's not Chipotle's biggest dream to fight against it. And AA already getting two players down from Chipotle is huge. Mm. Arrow for Chipotle does the exact same thing. With the pencil mm. is still roaming around, and that's going to be the downfall of Chipotle potentially. Let's see how X or how Mr. Is it comma? I don't know how, how Mr. Pencil is going to respond to. Yeah. I think being the only one alive for his team for a small second as Chipotle is preparing to get their first push in. Yeah, Chipotle is going to get splatted by Gecko with the Slush Hover. And right now, AEA is back on the attack, trying to clean up. Itsuki is going to get the Deep Bubbler, though. And right now, Chipotle has the numbers, has the position. And they're going to bring that Rainmaker to that checkpoint. Gets, getting that checkpoint right now is so good for Chipotle. They're on their way to get their first game but they need to make more points than that and EST is going to re-grab the Rainmaker. Mikey in! Mikey is going to get a, a splat, he's punished for it and uh, Chipotle, they slow down, they make more points though. Much, much more points, oh, just oh, bets oh. 11, 15! 15 is huge and Chipotle repops is going to get even more, they get to 12 right now. Yeah, Chipotle is definitely doing good job here, and they're still not done, they're still in, waiting, pushing it slowly. People are still able to jump in, a, a pencil just picks it up and gets it out of there. It's like, no, thank you very much, I'll rather keep it here. Very good push, Chipotle, man, for those single points scored by AEA, yet Chipotle has it already at 12. Good, good opening, the pencil, the second one on the map, is definitely oh. struggling, but now there's nobody at the second point, they're also jumping back to spawn. <gasps> That's a little oh. bit too late, big push for AA Association, and they're still going, they're not... Done yet, it could be going in, risky move, gets a good bubbler in, Tricer coming out, can protect him against a little bit, but not the full 
the full bubbler won't protect against the full tri strike, but the Rainmaker is about to reset, and if it does, Ooh. this pushes over for AA, and there it goes. Very good call. Bachapone to all jump back and stall the Rainmaker out towards the middle. However, AA Association can now pop it and get it back into the same position without a care in the world. Ooh. Yeah, and AA are back on the attack, already bringing back that Rainmaker. They need to go in there though, they need to go incredibly far close to the goal if they want to get that la uh, the, the, the lead because 12 points is huge but AA they know what they need to do they have the Zukas, they have the Tuzutsuki is getting a splat, is putting the big bubble on there that is going to be so awkward for AEA to get that push going and right now it's clean up time for Chipotle that trade is fine by them right now. They're fine getting traded as long as the push is done and Chipotle can paint the, their side of the map in blue. They're going to win this game and that pick onto the car but it's huge right now. AA has no way in and Chipotle is going to grab the Rainmaker and slowly, as slowly as they can, get back to mid. Yeah, they're just waiting. For those, Jabota is waiting for the openings that AA Association is presenting them. And they've so far been presented with quite a handful of openings. Chipotle mm -hmm. is definitely responding to them correctly. But now I think they decided it's their turn to start pushing again. It is their turn to start scoring some more points. Or at least we can remake an awkward spot. Goes mm -hmm. below the egg super shot. Good dart second on EST, unfortunately. But the Raymaker now being pushed back all the way to the second checkpoint or to the first checkpoint again for. Uh, on the inside of AA, it's going to buy them some extra time, which could be very, very valuable for Chipotle right now. Yeah, and right now, Chipotle, they, they brought the, the Rainmaker in a, in a deep spot where AA would have trouble bringing it back. And now, the Rainmaker being reset gives a free pop to Chipotle. Chipotle, all they need to do is deny, deny, deny for 20 more seconds, hats. All they need to do right now is just to hold that Rainmaker. Oh, they get two down though. They get three down. This is the opportunity for AEA. If AEA is able to push forward as fast as they can, they should be able to at least get a final shot, a final push in. Oh, wait. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind, Hat. Never mind. I mean, AEA had to push it quite far though. Let it get it all the way to 11. Which is a lot, which in this map is kind of a long shot. Yeah, but that's a very, uh... very good game ever for Chipotle, making this a good, very good one on one. However, the counts pick now onto the side of, um, of EAA Association. So I wonder what they're gonna pick. And it hopefully might just be. Well, can, can they pick Hagglefish? I think they can, right? I think I think lots of things can be picked, uh, and uh, yeah, Hagglefish is Hagglefish is on the table uh, for. Uh, I mean, they they cannot pick zones, but they can pick ha Hagglefish Tower. Okay, so that's good. Because Hagglefish might exactly just be what they need right now. Hmm. Yeah, but and, uh, honestly, like these two teams are now like they're, they're pretty even. They both have their strong suits. They both have their, their strong maps. AEA, they, they got game number one. So if they're able to do on their counter pick as well as Chipotle was doing on theirs, like they could bring it to a game five and get the W. But they need to to take a good counter pick to take the counter pick where they get the W. Yeah, but they also have to win a bit more games in order to get that W and that's how, how, mm -hmm. how it's going so far. It's definitely going uh, back and forth for both of these teams. I mean, AEA was dominant in one game, Chipotle was dominant in the second one. So if this good continues, then AEA might just win, but Chipotle might throw an oddball and uh, quickly pull a 2-0 unexpectedly out of their pocket. So uh, we're going to have to see. The counter pick will be a... The counter picks now are crucial though. As they are a good decider and also, I think, a good frame of reference of what the team is trying to do. Robot Roman was a map which I think suited the composition that uh, AA is running more than Anuto's mm -hmm. Spillway. Even Anuto's Spillway wasn't bad per se, I think it suited it 
less. I think the roller and having the normal roller having a little bit of extra range and the bubbler helped a ton. Same with the squeezer fighting on that map. So yeah, there's there's lots to take into account. Both of these teams have their own comp, their own playstyle, and the other team has to take that into account. Uh, when when taking their counter pick, they have to know. Okay, they do these. They have a carbon roller. They have a vanilla roller. They have a slusher. They like there, there's lots of moving parts and things to take into account. And at this point, we are deep into a tournament. Hat. This is getting late. At, at this point, you have to go with what you're sure you can win on, where you are comfortable, because people are getting tired. We are in the finals of this battling pool. It's been four hours of tournament for both of these teams. Like, you you, you, you have to make sure that you win and it's going to be a tough one. Like, it's endurance at this point. It really is endurance. I mean, also at this point, uh, you can't really make a lot of weird changes anymore. You've kind of reached a point where it's like, yeah, if you're gonna do that, then uh, you're kind of throwing away, almost throwing away everything you might have built up everything you mm -hmm. you're trying to achieve uh at this point of the tournament so you, you gotta play it risky but at the same time you gotta play it very very carefully it's a bit of a a bit of a balance kind yeah. of act right now it's it's all about that but yeah one one these two teams have shown so much during this whole tournament bringing the upsets creating the comps all all they can do and now it's on them to choose their counter pick why are they not okay they finally and we're going to go on to clam blitz on museum di alfonsino that's uh oh that's i like museum but clam blitz okay that's uh that's 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 mm -hmm. a pick that's something. I think with the pencil difference, like the pencil on top mid can paint everything, get you tactic coolers. This is like, if if AEA are able to take their position into mid, they can stay there for the whole game. It's really on Chipotle to find a way to, to contest that pencil on the open ground. If they're able to do that, they they can really contest what AEA is doing. But this is very strong counter pick by AEA. That's I think a very good counter pick, uh, mm -hmm. indeed. And it will sort of be the same as I mean, it, it, it's a map. It sort of has some characteristics like Robot Roman, mm -hmm. where it is very big and very open. Yeah, and that's that's where um, that is where. Uh, AEA was excelling at, and the uh, Tripoli was struggling a little bit. So the counter pick is is good. Clamlet still, however, is it's an mm -hmm. it's an interesting pick. I like it, but it is an interesting pick. Yeah, and it's pretty great. And we are about to see how it goes. What these teams are bringing, and uh, yeah, I, I don't expect much change in terms of team composition, like this. Yeah. This is the weapons that uh, they're bringing. Oh, okay. AA bringing back the Kraken Roller. They want that that Kraken Royal and these beacons to uh, to get the most of the Clam Blitz. I mean, you know what Kraken does on Clam Blitz. I love Kraken. I really do. I'm happy they're bringing it. Uh, oh, careful bringing saying it that you're going to make enemies. <laughs> I, I, crack on, crack on the goat has been there since one. It's always been, been with me, even though I barely played this one because I never, I never <laughs> understood how to play rotors. Anyway, AA going in early, getting that big opening uh, clam onto the basket and getting some more points in 71 to be exact. But I think with that they are also done pushing. With it. It's a little respectable push that it, it scored some, it scored some yeah. points open. It's very fast. They wanted to be the quick on the opening, show what they are able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, Chipotle, however, is also preparing their own push oh. with a big splash onto that Suka will delay that push from Chipotle by a long shot as AA Association has another power climate already and is also preparing to start pushing. 
right now AEA has great control over this map and yeah they got a small push at the opening but they're back into mid they're back on the top mid and with the kraken deployed right under the basket it's going to be another opening the clams are flying in and AEA is making more points chipotle able to shut it down though able to save it stop the bleeding but they are down 60 points right now 60 point hat they have a lot of lead to come back from and they're already two players down again yeah it's uh, it's not looking too hot for um for chipotle indeed 39 points is huge for aa associate and they are still holding big control to mid that pencil is just messing with chipotle's head they can't do anything about that tries for going out in the left side of the map Getting rid of the squeezer ends up getting splattered by, I believe, the pencil. And look at that! Three players down, and another Ooh. push is already commencing at Chipotle's base. Power Clam is created a little chaotic, but it is there a little bit late as well. So Chipotle yeah. was able to respawn and get the defensive positions back, but still, that kind of shows how strong AEA is. Hmm. AEA, they, they're not stopping, they've been pushing since the start of the game. We are two minutes and a half into the game and AEA has been pushing non-stop, constantly throwing bombs, throwing specials, attacking with their own bodies, with that roller getting in and right now Chipotle is struggling just to control their own platform. The second they're down out of the platform they have to super jump out and Gekko with a slusher is back on the attack right now. So many clams in the hands of AEA. Bad Basket is going to reopen itself and more points have to come. Oh wait, wait. Big, Hat. big this wait. This is the opportunity. This, it might, it it might really be. It might yeah. really be. Can Chipotle really find that opening? Tacticooler also has been placed mm -hmm. by AEA Association. So they are preparing for this push. They only lost the Cracker Roller though. They haven't lost anyone else really for this push. Power Clamp goes in. That's the start of something. Three players are down oh. as well. Another power clamp goes in. Pushes the 57 immediately. 48. They swap oh. the lead and one single push and put it at 18. And it's still the top clan for spawning in the base. That's one hell of a push from Chipotle. That's as spicy as the restaurant food that their name is named after. Because. That's how you push Clamblitz, ladies and gentlemen. 18 points from 100. This team is not messing around. Yeah, it only took one push by Chipotle, but AEA, they're not done yet. They have two players down onto Chipotle, and they're getting the jumps in. They're getting that lead back, and they're getting the super clam in the basket. That's okay. Oh, good showing by Chipotle, good patience, good awareness, but in the end, AEA just bleeding so many clams into the basket throughout the game, able to take it. Yeah, it was unfortunate for Chipotle, they did so, so well, and then... Mm -hmm. that, that hurts. Yeah. That kind of hurts. That kind of really hurts. It's such a good <laughs> you get such a push in then it's just it's just not enough. Yeah, a lot that can happen and uh AEA really able to, to come back uh, despite that huge huge push that she apparently got. AEA not minding really making sure that oh yeah you threw everything you had to take that lead. Well now you used too many resources we are going to get but we are not going to waste time we're already under your platform and we collected the clams in time to get that lead back i feel like uh aa or Tiprona didn't even use that much resources for the push mm -hmm. at all i mean yeah they lost three players uh yeah. whilst it was happening but i feel like in a push like that caliber it's not even that uncommon to lose a couple mm -hmm. players as well and well uh uh, a AA had to recover quite fully mm. from the push as well because even if oh, yeah. uh, Chipotle used a lot of resources, Chipotle also did a lot of damage oh, uh, yeah. towards oh, the resources yeah. of AA. So that's just how fast AA is.
Yeah, AJ clearly getting that comeback, clearly getting back in the game and putting Chipotle on notice. If AA wins a single more game, they win this tournament. They're your paddling ball champion. Chipotle needs to win two more and they need to win on Macobart on Splat Zones. They really, really do. They are going to throw out their best game. They're going to throw every single stop. This is the map where they thrive at fighting against uh, coffee mm -hmm. plus maple syrup. So hopefully for them, they thrive here and push this towards a game five. But in your paddling pool, anything can realistically happen. Oh yeah, uh, like the game is still up. It's not over. Chipotle has lots of opportunities to get back in. All they need to do is to win this one. And uh, yeah, Macazones, you know what to do. Both teams know what to do. They already the very, very fast. They know their weapons. I think the Carbon is going to come back at. I really hope that Carbon is going to come back because I cannot get enough of that oh. Carbon brother. Yeah, and EST for Chipotle is bringing a pencil. Meanwhile, Ter is bringing a 52. That's a different comp for Chipotle. Chipotle mixing things up, getting a bit more aggro and having that pencil of their own to allow the jump back in and more tactical and pressure. That's, that's a good opportunity. That's a good switch by Chipotle, but that also means they have less uh, ledges opportunities right now. It's just EST. For Chipotle, that's control of the zone and the map for EAEA. I mean, I feel like they needed a pencil in order to kind of win against the other pencil mm -hmm. because it, it was one of the weapons that they were very much struggling with. So it was it was quite on the cards to finally, big mm -hmm. finally pick it. But AEA is doing big work on the zone, pushing it past the halfway point already. And they're not done yet. That zone is back in control and those point counter is back to going down 40 ticks remaining and going down steadily they're doing big big work chipotle finally gets some grasp on that zone switching it up big 49 penalty applied on to aa esports association it's what an opening push great push and chipotle applying penalty but aea are back in control they have the zone Again, EST is above the zone, he's going to be pushed away though, he's going to lose the job. Both pencils are down right now. AEA winning the team fight though, pushing all of Chipotle away, keeping control of the zone. They're almost done with the penalty. They could win this game here and there. No more penalties, just 30 more ticks and they could get the KO. Yeah, they definitely can. Let's see how Chipo how AA is going to handle this though. Chipotle is going to throw everything out of the closet in order to get that zone back. They're going to give them the 100% but only 10 takes remaining for AA Association. The 52 Ooh. goes down. Two players go down to the side of Chipotle. And with that absolute domination of a game, AEA Association's eSports team is your battling pool. 262 champions beating out some crazy big names such as well i guess not chipotle being half of hang mango hack mac maple syrup and coffee and blue comet so this team can be really really proud of themselves for what they have achieved today yeah that's that was great games and congratulations to AEA for being your paddling pool 262 champions. That was an awesome tournament with lots of upset, lots of things happened tonight, Hat. But before we go, where plug yourself? Where, where can we find you? Well, you can find me at my very originally named at Caster Hats on Twitter, where I post a lot of random stuff and that's kind of it, really. I don't really mm -hmm. use social media anymore, so uh, you can find me there. But Pat, what about you? You've been shouting. You've been asking to shout themselves out, but I think we should shout out you. Where can we find you? 
Well, you can find me on Twitter at Pat or Tom. It's written on your screen right now. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that was awesome. And also, we have someone else to to thank. Someone to thank even more. It's Brownie, our awesome observer and streamer. Brownie, where can we find you? Yeah, yes, a lot I of fun. Agree. Yeah. It was it was good, it was good, but Beth, four hours. No, no, you did long. Yeah, you did four hours, right? You did both the opening and the opening the opening two hours and yes. these two hours. I remember when I did those four hours. I can't imagine myself <laughs> yeah. doing it again. I did it a couple times after still. I can't imagine myself doing it again. But uh I hope you enjoyed Pat's voice for the last four hours. I sure enjoyed Pat's voice for at least four hours. Probably well, not. my voice is not enjoying itself so much now, so we're <laughs> going to go, we're going to have a raid. Thank you so much to Dapple for having us, and thank you for watching! <laughs>